Now Atuti once again this week on Apex Racing TV as we bring you live action from Imola on BSR race night. Good evening everybody, Andrew Woodhouse here alongside our Racing World Championship driver Alex Simpson. And um, Alex, well, round 36 of the season coming up in the BSR TC, but first of all, we've got the Porsche in action and this should be fun. Yeah, looking forward to uh, the races tonight, all uh, five of them. Five? Six? Six, Six of them, yes. Jeez, yeah. Oh. I'm just thinking it was uh, last week all over again. So, yeah, going to be um, going to be a busy night for sure. And um, I think the racing is going to be a lot, lot closer than what we saw last week. But um, yeah, just uh, looking forward to it. This is a great little track. Good couple of um, overtaking opportunities for both cars as well. Um, the, um, the BSR TC pack, I mean, it's just going to be ridiculous. Um, 19 cars out there for... Um, for the Porsche tonight, so that should be good as well. A very technical circuit there, and um, some of you, the the, you know, the attentive among you, may be wondering where is Adam Bath? Well, the answer is right here, actually. Um, Adam, you're going to be racing in the BSRTC tonight. Oh yeah, I've, I don't know what I've signed up for really. Um, after the few practice laps, but yeah, uh, yeah, going to be in the four races of the BSRTC, trying to see uh, whether we know what we're talking about, really. Well, we I've, won a club, I've won a club series race, I should just, I should just mention, so... We've had, we've had, I was going to say, we have had um, evidence that we do know what we're doing in this commentary box, but um, it does need to be renewed every now and again. So Alex, that's why we've sent Adam out there to um, I, either help or ruin our reputation. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, don't send me, I'll ruin it for sure in that <laughs> car. <laughs> yeah, well, that, that's another story for another day, is that? Um, that Maybe for next season. Next season. We keep uh, saying that, but yeah. we, or, or, if we can get me out of the, um, the editing or the capturing I will find uh, booth, you. then we will uh, we'll get me in the car. We'll do something. Um, Tommy Oscar's definitely doing something out there. He's um, eight tenths quicker than anybody else out there. So it's looking good for him. Josh Thompson at the minute is second. Randy Shield in third. We've got one minute left to qualify and the drivers are pushing hard. Uh, Sam Kumo is in sixth position. Our colleague here at Apex Racing TV. Nobody's really just started a lap. So we're looking at Tommy Osgard here. He goes into Piratella in the middle, middle part of the lap. It's a a nice flowing section this Alex leading into one of the more tricky corners on the course the uh, Variante Alta yeah probably the toughest corner on the circuit certainly the one that I struggle with the most um, so easy to get it all wrong and then um, of course you can get the off track and the slowdown penalty there as well so it's uh, it's very very tricky For those who think oh it's it's just a chicane how hard can it be as Oscar um, goes wide on the exit of that what is so difficult about that corner? Yeah, like I say, for me, it's just the um, just the, the fact that you've got to brake and turn at the same time, so the car naturally just wants to push on, so it's very easy to run wide, get a car on, get a wheel onto the um, onto the grass, and you just lose the back end then, or you can just slide on and just miss the apex completely. So getting that absolute sweet spot where you turn in and get on the power before the apex, so you drive off up the hill, that's the really, really tough part. So. It's very easy to do that and just run off wide and that's when you have to get out the power to avoid the slowdown. So, you've so, got those, so many um, different things can go wrong there. And you've got those great big high curbs as well for good measure. That's it. Um, obviously can unsettle the car and you really just need a good bounce a lot at the top of the hill. Well, that can make a big difference, you know, catching the um, catching the chicane curves right is going to be critical as well, having the car set up so that it lands quite well. The last thing you want is a whole <laughs> bunch of pogo. Yeah, yeah, so um, people might sacrifice a bit of raw speed um, in the actual physical setup just to get the damp in right so that the car sort of sits down quite nicely and, you know, gets going. It could definitely gain you a good quarter of a second a lap. Right. Um, qualifying then is over. And um, Tommy Oscard, indeed, is going to be starting on pole. 143.694 around this 4.91 kilometre circuit. Josh Thompson will join him on the front row with the two CQR cars, Matthew Bunn and Andy Scheel in third and fourth. Lewis Bibby is fifth ahead of David White. Excuse me, and then it's Sam Kumo in seventh with Josh Valentine eighth, Steve Hefford ninth and Daniel Brown in tenth. Miles Clutzley is eleventh. So that's surprisingly 
quite a way down for him. Adam McNally's 12th. Really the same for him. Dan Blake, 13th. Ewan Tyndall, 14th. Uh, 15th, Stephen Minton. And then at the back, it's uh, four drivers who haven't set a time. Daniel Hunt, Simon Landemore, Frankie Myers, and uh, Nick McCarron. And uh, Alex, there's quite a few drivers, actually, at the back of the grid. Um, or in even the lower half of the grid wait, that you really don't expect down there. Yeah, I would agree with that. But I would also say, looking at those times, the fir the front few are they're separated by quite some large margins there. And then the mid-pack is very, very close. Mm. So you could have easily seen um, Klutzy up in sort of, uh, sort of fifth or sixth place with a tenth or two difference in his uh, queue time. So, yeah, I think the front, looking at this, if the guys break away... And and um, just as they are at the you know off the grid, they they all spread out pretty quickly. But the mid pack is going to be where all the action is. Because someone like you and Tyndall in fourteenth, if he'd have found two tenths, he'd have ended up tenth. So three tenths would have got him eighth. So yeah, yeah I think I think you're um, I think you're spot on there. You're of course very used to qualifying in grids like that, where even a few hundredths of a second could get you a couple of rows up the grid. Yeah, exactly. I mean, um, just uh, just last weekend, you know, three tenths of a second would have seen us jump from twenty first or something like that to tenth. So, you know, <laughs> so, yep, yep. Mm. and you wonder where that three tenths of a second's gone, don't you? Even though you you know well, you might yeah, have done, you might well, have done a good you know, lap. Um, oh, we knew exactly where that was as well. So um, <laughs> just one little mistake, unfortunately, and, and you can lose that sort of time. So yep. it's um, yeah. That's the thing with the competitiveness in this series start to match some of the other series, you know, some of the, the um, some of the higher series in um, iRacing's World Championship. That's the thing with this track as well, is um, you know mistakes. You can see drivers just having these little mistakes here and there. It's a very very tricky circuit to get right every single lap. So I think that's where the main overtaking is going to be. Do you agree that the the, the overtaking is going to come? if any, into the uh, Tamburello? I think so. I think there'll be a couple of places that we'll see some moves um, moves done, but yeah, that's going to be the the number one spot. Right then. Not too long away then from getting this ESR Porsche Cup race underway. In a great season so far. In just a few seconds time, we'll be getting round 19 underway. Sam Kumo leading the way by 38 points. Can he keep hold of that championship advantage? Nineteen cars waiting for the lights to come on. Waiting for a couple of people who haven't taken to the grid. Here we go then. The red lights are beginning to come on. Green, green, green! Now the green light is on. Oh, what a poor start that was by Josh Thompson. Excellent one by Matthew Bunn, who's already up into second position. Into the Tamburello. All side by side with Thompson. Bunn hits the curb hard. Thompson already going through and retaking that position. That's important for Josh to do. Um, and he's defending hard now into Villeneuve. And the side by side, and Bunn's trying down the outside. Oh no, he's UGE did him. Over he goes into the gravel. And out goes Josh Thompson. And well, but he might be a, he might, had it as well. It might be a Thursday, Alex, but it doesn't change for Josh Thompson. No, not at all. Dear me, we see people lose super licenses for moves like that. <laughs> as he bashed into the curb, did uh, Matt Bunt. And then into um, that was all it was hit Thompson. the curb it pushed him wide didn't it and um, yeah unfortunately uh, Thompson was there so it's going to end in um, disaster. Tommy Oscar then already has a three second lead over Andy Shield. There was Bibby's in third, and then it's fourth Sam Kumo, fifth David White, and then sixth is Hefford. And there's um, all sorts going on at the, um, the chicane here. Miles Kurtzley is up to 7th, then 8th is Josh Valentine, 9th Daniel Brown, 10th Dan Blake, and then McNally in 11th, Hinton in 12th, and Matt Bunn 13th, with Myers 14th, Hindle 15th. That's the running order for, then uh, at the end McNally, of the first lap. Yeah. Uh, no, uh, uh, Valentine, sorry. Oh, Valentine, yeah, he's dropped down 
behind McNally. I think that's what you must have seen. And Minton is just behind him. And if Minton's going to have a go into the Tamburello here, a nice run, slipstream, close enough. Ah, we do have a move actually going on. It's um, Frankie Myers and Ewan Tyndall. Side by side, Myers has got damage, so I wonder if he's made any contact somewhere, Alex, with the car, or is that with the trackside furniture? I'm not sure. Yeah, big damage, isn't there, on that car, so I'm not sure where and how that's happened. Look, but Look at this into Toza. We've got Cam Blake, um, David White, who's dropped down from fifth, as goes. Minton. Minton, oh dear. Spinton this time. Round he went. And um, you've got Valentine, White, McNally, and Blake really fighting hard now in that midfield, this midfield position. Dan Blake into Aquaminerale, locking the brakes up the hill towards the, the corner that we described at the very start of the broadcast, the very anti outtouch. It literally translates to high chicane. And it's a mistake by Sam Kumo. That means he's under pressure from Daniel Brown. And he's been passed by Daniel Brown and by Dan Blake. It's all gone wrong for Kumo on this lap, Alex. He, he, he did start the lap in P4. Yeah, he wanted... Definitely not fourth now. We wanted to hold on to that as well because you know, that would be a good result. Especially with Bun being in the wars. Bun incidentally still going at the back of this group. With all sorts of damage on that car. But he's still in the running. Tommy Uskard leads by three and a half seconds. Andy Shield second, then it's Bibby. These three are really miles clear of anyone else. Four seconds clear of Steve Hefford, who's made a fantastic start and it's up from ninth position on the grid. And he's currently running in fourth. As closely is following closely to Hooper and Hefford. Only about three quarters of a second behind him. So oh, Valentine and um, Bun, oh, Bun all over the place again. Loses the car. Throwing it in here, there and everywhere. No real patience today, it seems. Just um, picking Andrew. himself, obviously, from making that mistake earlier on. And just, um, yeah, a bit oh. of red mist and he's all over the place again. Just settling in, and of course, Grace is just oh, going from Hefford bad to worse. Who is that? That Hefford. was Hefford. Hefford is sideways, coming out of the hotel. And that's a strange place to lose the car. Went onto the outside, onto the AstroTurf, Alex. Rear wheels, no grip. Hard slam into the wall. That sent closely out onto the gravel. And he, did he save it, does he? I think he did. He's gone off the track two or three times to, to save it, but... Um, David, he does. Alex, it might be worth going on board. Yep, with, just seeing the replay of that now. With Cloatsley and just see if you see how he manages that. Yeah, just about. Rejoins just ahead of Kumo, doesn't he? So there was actually some contact further back as well after that. I'm not sure who that was. He did massively well to save that, though, I must admit. But yeah, this mid pack, um, like I say, I thought this was going to be exciting. Ostergaard 5.1 seconds in front now, so. You know, not too much oh. going on um, at the front, I'm afraid, guys. But Someone's Bibby's still fairly close to um, Andy Shales, though. Somebody's not going to get any TV time. Yep. And Slow down, Tommy. <laughs> someone who is is uh, Mars Kutzley, is what we've seen. Sam Kumo is actually back up to sixth position, so that's really good indeed. He doesn't like the circuit, but he... Um, or if he does like it, he says he's no good at it. <laughs> so He's proven otherwise here. Look at this pack though now we've got Clutchley, Kumo, Blake, White, Nally and Bun. Although the way this is going for Bun, he's going to overtake them all, then spin to the back and then overtake a few more again. <laughs> Only six laps to go though, so he's going to have to get a wriggle on if he's going to uh, well, he's trying. do that. Have a look on McNally, but Youth Energy car holds its ground. CQR car, the battered CQR car. Continues to chase. Harass McNally. 
Yeah, Bond just doesn't seem to have a lot of control in this Porsche. Oh, a couple of guys oh. over the curb big time. I think that would be a slowdown. A slowdown slow down from Nally, I think it is. To be able to serve it and get in the slipstream and fun though. Be able to fight back. You've got you and Tyndall at the back of the group now. He's up into 11th. Maybe he just can't really get close enough to Shield to worry him, I think, at the minute. Well, I mean, he's closer than he was last lap. That's only four tenths of a second, so... Uh, a chance for Bibby. Bibby's doing double duty tonight, racing for Sim Gear in the. Boom, having a look. SRTC. Oh, him on the inside then, into turn one. Oh, oh he's he lost it. Hard, he loses it. That's not what he wanted to do at all. That's and this is what we're talking about the curbs, you know? It really is important to get the car set up to handle the curbs. And he hits a couple the wall. of people fall victim to that now. Bun and um, Championship mm -hmm. leader, Puma. He, he, spot, he hit the wall trying to um, turn it round as well. He lost it in the worst oh, possible place. Oh, who's that place. in the background as well? That's um, you and Tyndall as well. He's around in the auto met car. Everybody's struggling out there big time today. A spin for Tyndall and oh yeah, loses it, didn't he? And that, that is, you know, it's a fairly easy place to. Um, it's a fairly easy place to lose it. Blake just moves out the way for um, the map. The bun moving up the order then. It's back up into about sixth or seventh place, isn't it? Six, yeah, indeed. Don't know how he's managed that really, but done well. Pops up again through the chicane. Makes the apex nicely though. Good a exit. Car left. Well, surely going to be under a little bit of pressure. then for what is half the race distance. Fun having a look from a long way back. But we know the CQR guys are aggressive with the overtaking. Um, but it really is, it's those, it's those half looks, isn't it, that make people think twice and kind of get people out of the way, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. If you don't show your nose at all, then you know, people aren't going to worry in the, uh, in the least, are they? So, yeah. yeah, you're right. Just put that doubt in in the mind. But I wonder if Bun's doubt might be more to do with the um, car remaining on the circuit because he he does look fast, but he does look like he's still fighting that 911. Could have gone up the inside, I think, there into Villeneuve, but I did not. Too might just get a nice run out into Toza. He's his teammate, of course, so I don't want to be. I uh, want to hit him around the outside. Well, that's very good indeed. On the outside of the lowest corner on the circuit. And that's him. You know what? I don't think I've ever seen somebody do that. Ah, good job. Good In move. years of watching races in the Imola, I don't think I've ever seen anyone go around the outside there. Please, uh, if anybody's watching this and knows that there has been, then uh, please let me know, because that is very, very good indeed by Matt Bud. Maybe. Um, very, very close to um, Andy again, so over seems half a to second. Drop, seems to go half a second, then drop back, then come in again, then drop back. Very strange line there for um, Andy. Oh, <laughs> got a feeling Bun's just been disqualified. Oh, you're telling me after all that? Oh. Well, I would imagine that's the case. <laughs> but, um, rough so well to get back up through the field. Yeah, his, end, his night ends early, well not his whole night, but this one, particular race. Of course we've still got um, another Porsche race to come, we've got four Kia Optima races and the oh, Brit Bibi British big Sim mistake. races. Sorry Andrew to cut you no, off don't there, worry. but uh, just about holds on to it, but he's uh, trekking over all of the high sausage curbs there. Fortunately the car holds on, um, but he's now 1.9 seconds clear, so he lost over a second just there. Right, well, just that first one, wasn't it? It just launched him yeah. up. It was a bit like a, a slower version of... Do you remember what happened to Kip at Monza the other yep. day? Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's like he hit it with the with the floor, didn't he? And, and, and not the wheels, and that's really what um, sent, him, sent him in the air. Means he's got that work to do again. Uh, we haven't mentioned, really, apart from once, I think, we haven't really mentioned um, Daniel Brown up in fourth position. Started in 10th and he's really taken advantage of other people's misfortunes. 
and driven a fantastic race to be in this top four position. Yeah, yeah, as he uh, made a good move, didn't he, to get by um, uh, Kumo earlier mm. on, and um, he just sort of drove away from the pack after then. So, yeah, good drive so far. Back in performance by Brown. Showing what he's made of. And Miles Clutzley is also showing what he's made of. Trying to hold this pack behind him, including Dan Blake, David White, and Adam McNally. Ewan Tyndall is in ninth, Sam Kumo is in tenth after the spin. And lapping, how quickly is he lapping? Uh, not particularly quickly. Well, he's quicker than a couple of the guys in front. Louis Bibby, of course, lost over a second with that version. Kumo's got an excursion of his own. On board with our leader, thought we'd better give him a little bit of exposure. Looks very, very comfortable in there, not really pushing the car at all. Absolutely got it glued underneath him. Feels very, very comfortable just to um, let the car almost drive itself and uh, yeah, 10.8 second lead now, so absolutely flying. Might as well take us through the rest of this lap, mate, with him. Yep, down into what is uh, yeah my trickiest corner. Then you can see like just constantly braking, turning, gets that turn in, picks up the apex, nice. Using all the curb on the inside and the outside, getting on the power early, avoids the uh, slowdown penalty. The chicane, and get yourself ready here. So just to clip the inside one, hop a lot more over the the left, and uh, get onto the power once that car settles down. The car does look very nice, I have to say, settled down beautifully over there. So. Tommy's done some work on the setup here. How early he has to break for the penultimate corner as well. So crazy, crazy early. So no ABS, of course, it? in this car. So it's very easy to lock up. Um, far too easy, if you ask me. Um, but yeah, gets a great last couple of corners there, and he's away with. Uh, this will be the uh, final head on to final lap. Yeah, nice um, onboard footage there with uh, Tommy Oscar. But yeah, it's just that, that downhill braking area into um, Rivatsun is very, very tough in any car, really. The um, thing is, he's off the power and braking before he even goes through the little kink. You yeah. know, normally you get the uh, go around the kink, and that's your cue to get on the brake. You know, you would in the Grand Prix car, certainly. But, oh, um, well, I know in the V8s as well. You know, no problem. Yeah. <laughs> as well with that. And, um, Oscar's not struggling at all moment leading by 11.4 seconds over the line last time are there going to be any position changes well I've got a feeling if there are it's going to be Dan Blake and Miles closely because mm. they are very they are in such close company at the minute to Toza now Blake nearly Nearly close enough to have a look, but he really needs to get a, um, a good middle sector together. Give himself a chance of, um, of having a bit of a lunge into the... Probably into Rivatsa, actually. He can. That's where it's going to have to be. Losing time, actually, all the, all the while. Six tenths of a second, where is our leader? Because he's not going to be too far through. Coming into the uh, Rivatsa itself. Yeah. Tommy Oscar, then. Started on pole, a uh, big advantage in qualifying, and uh, well, he's really turned that into a massive advantage on race day because Tommy Oscar comes across. And he wins here at Imola, he wins round 19 of the season in the BSR Porsche Cup, and he will be very, very happy with that indeed. Andy Shield in P2. Well, he wouldn't necessarily expect a second place today, but. He takes that gladly. Lewis Bibby in third. I think he had the pace possibly to finish second, but he just couldn't keep it all nice and tidy. Dan Brown, driver of the driver of the race for me. And up to P4. Then Miles Clutzley in fifth. Dan Blake, who made up seven positions as well. Ahead of Adam McNally and David White in eighth. Ewan Tyndall comes across after a spin and finishes ninth. Steve Minton spun as well. He'll be very happy, I would imagine, with a, a, uh, a nice top 10 finish. Uh, Frankie Myers in 
11th? Oh, so the 11th, 12th, sorry. Yeah. Yes. That was a brain fart moment, wasn't it? Uh, Sam Kumo, uh, unlucky for him, 13th place. And um, yeah, just a bit of a sloppy race in, in the end. For mistakes. And Matt Bunt, Josh Valentine, Josh Thompson retired, Dan Hunt, Nick McCarran, and Simon Landemore didn't take the start. So Sam Kumo is the last car on the lead lap. So I believe he will be starting on pole for race two, which you can see coming up in just a bit here on Apex Racing TV. First of all, we've got to head over to the British Sim Racers Touring Car Championship where their evening will kick off. And we'll, we'll have an interview with Adam Bath when we come back here on Apex Racing TV.
Simulated racing can be awesome, but can also be kind of a free-for-all. Interestingly, auto racing faced the same problem in its earlier days. Whether it was on the back roads, the beaches, or the city streets, the racing was fun. But there was always a certain level of chaos and danger, until some folks came along and put some order to all of this. Stuff like official racetracks, regulations about weight and equipment, and enforcement of standards. That's what gave us high-speed excitement, fast-paced action, and photo finishes. That's when racing became racing. The guys over at iRacing.com have made the same transformation in the world of sim racing. Sure, they've got the most accurate tracks and realistic cars out there, but that's just the start. See, iRacing analyzes the performance and results of each driver in every race. So you can be sure you're always placed in races where the competition will be tight. And that those reckless drivers who ruin it for us all are kept in the pits. Not to mention that with over 45,000 active members already in their vast community, you can find races day and night. So you can always get in on the action. You can even join a league of your favorite series. And since updates are always automatic, you don't have to worry about software and can focus on the track. Zip up your fire suit and check out iRacing.com. Welcome back to Imola here on Apex Racing TV and I'm Racing Live for round 39 of the iRacing MSA, uh, round 36, sorry, of the iRacing MSA British Sim Racers Touring Car Championship. Andrew Winhouse alongside Alex Simpson. Alex, that Porsche race was um, pretty exciting actually and uh, now we're just going to ramp it up a little bit more. We've got a 49, uh, we've got a 51 car grid for this one, it should be interesting. Yeah, huge, uh, huge grid and uh, yeah, great support series, proved itself that. Um, not sure we're going to see it next season though, next iRacing season that is. Uh, so some rumours and um, talk about it Ooh, moving out to its own independent thing. So um, yeah, we'll see um, if that continues for the remainder of the uh, BSRTC this season. But yeah, Imola, 51 cars, 51 Kias, absolutely going at it. Uh, front wheel drive, touring car action. Yeah, this is going to be great. The, um, yeah, the... Uh the, the gossip column intensifies and um, going to bring in Adam Bath momentarily he's done his qualifying lap at least quite interesting he's currently sat in 17th place in the uh, in the standings which um, to be honest Alex for someone who hasn't driven the circuit um, at all really this week is um, very good on too shabby no, I, can't, I don't think we can complain about that. Although he's behind Woodhouse, so some things, uh, some things never change. <laughs> right. <laughs> Hello. 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 Um, how are you feeling, mate? Four races tonight. Um, what's the goal? Well, um, four finishes. I'll start off. I'll set my sights low. I think. Um, right, I was just repaying you back for you when you said you beat me in the uh, in the rally last week. Oh, I, 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 oh, there you uh, go. As, <laughs> I think you were again the other way. <laughs> 18th on the grid. Well, you did. 18th on the grid. Yeah. Um, we're, we're well aware. We're well aware it's the danger area on the grid, as we see every week. What are you going to do to try to prevent getting caught up in any accidents? Do you have a Do you have a plan for where you're going to go, or is it just what it, is it just what you see in front of you? Uh, what, I've, what I've done the last few races, last times I've been in the Kia in a championship like this or in the World Series, is just try and follow the person in front and. Uh, most of the time I've done that, it's gone pretty well. However, I'm sure it might come to an end here today, so we'll be we got, try and be a bit careful here. We've got some familiar names around you, the likes of Paul Smith, um, Laura Bond, Mark Woodhouse, Richard Gore, Colin Cuniff, Dennis Melcher. Um, so, you know, good you, hands, I think. you've got some guys I think you could, I think are very clean drivers who you should be able to race with nicely, I think. So yeah. Um, yeah, well, it should, should be good. You should have more pace as well in that car. Probably j during the meeting, as 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 the practice level goes up. I hope so. Yeah, I've got a good setup uh, that got handed kindly over to me by um, none other than Stalin Shepolevsky. So uh, that's helped me in qualifying because uh, I was pretty slow in practice. I must be, I must be said. So yeah, we'll see what happens, and yeah, hopefully can bring home a, a top ten from this first race. All right. Well, we'll leave you to it. Good luck. Uh, in fact, Alex, quickly, have you got anything for Adam just before he goes? No, just wish him all the best of luck. Really. 
Thank you. Oh. Right. Good luck, Adam. We'll be watching. Right, Alex. So, a, a good, a very, very creditable starting position, I think, though, there, 18th in all seriousness, is... Um, He's ahead of some race winners and some champions in that lineup. Yeah, I know. So, yeah, very good quality. Very good. He'll be happy with that. Uh, We're just having a look at the championship standings that have just flipped by the screen as well. So, still very, very close. Um, anyone's, um, yeah, anyone can still get in the top ten for the showdowns because we're so early. It's not even worth talking about it at this point. But it is. I think the one thing that we might have to come to in the next couple of weeks, at least, is um, you know the wild card places, the race wins, and things yep. like that, because that's yep. going to start getting in. It, it'll have its own little championship, won't it, at, at some point? So um, looks very interesting. Does the grid? Uh, Wojciech Savinovic is on pole position. Now he's three tenths ahead of anybody else. Then it's Stelian Chepalevsky. Ben Haxon up there for boosted motorsport in third place. That's the best I think we've ever seen from Haxon in qualifying. Matthew Bunn in fourth. We just saw him in the Porsche. He obviously goes well round here, but he needs to keep it on the island this time. Sven Glatzel fifth. Jake Blackall, the Australian, in sixth. With um, Alex Everett up in seventh. I think he'll be very happy with that as well. Fanatec looking very, very strong in the opening part of the season. Will Tregertha up there in eighth. Pete Harrod in ninth. 10, Stephen Baxter, Alex Smolenski in 11th. Then you've got and Ashley Sutton in only 12th. Uh, Andreas Katz, 13th. Laura Bond, Paul Smith, Mark Woodhouse, Richard Gore. Adam Bath, as we mentioned, in 18th position. Colin Cuniff, 19th. 20th, Dennis Melcher. And you've got Sakovic, Bodis, Ayres, Helgerson, Baker, Atkinson, Graham. Baker down 25th, by the way. Uh, Graham, 27th. Then McFarlane, McIntyre, Wright, Malcolm, Blake, Murray Kieber, Stevens, Rizzo, Whitehead in 37th, Roden 38th, Roberts 39th, 40th for Verke. Then all the cars at the back, Naughty Boys from last week, Castrolido, Thompson, Kraft, Foggy, Laidler, Davies, McFadden, Hall, Hadfield, Hickling and Christie. And I wish Adam was here to read out the grids, Alex. Yeah, exactly. Oh, well, here we go then. 51 cars. Take to the Autodromo, Enzo, Edino, Ferrari. Right about. Green, green, green. No. As the green flag flies, and it's a got start. an absolute flyer. Beautiful start by Stelian Czeplowski. Poor one for the reigning champion. Car number one, Wojciech Stavinovic with the red minners. Stelian Czeplowski with the orange minners. Into the lead then, through Tamburello corner. Hackerson and, and uh, Glatzel. Glatzel up to third position. What a fantastic start that was from fifth on the grid. Then it's Hackerson in fourth. Fifth is Matt Bunn. And then it's uh, Jake Blackhall in sixth. Seventh then for Alex Everett. So everybody at the front. Oh, Stanley Czecholetsky goes wide. And that gives a chance to Wojciech Svinovic, Alex and Glatzel trying to go almost up the middle. Oh, just having a look at someone very out of shape further back as well. I think it's Trigertha, was it? It's back, just streaming through here. The se separation is already pretty extreme, I have to say. <laughs> I think it might have been Will Trigertha who was in the, in the sideways going coming out of the hairpin. And um, Sven Glatzel has gone round the outside of Stelian Czechlevsky. We, we've seen good performances from Sven Glatzel in his rookie year, Alex, in the BSR TC, but he's in second place and he's he, he looks like he's he's really flying out there at the moment. Yeah, Sven, he's going to be one to watch for sure. Very, very quick driver. I've shown that. Countless times in this uh, this season, so and in previous championships as well, and looking very racy now, old, like he almost wants to um, go for the lead. He's won from the old World Series, isn't he? So yeah. that's where he's built up his pace and things. I remember racing against him; it was very evenly matched there. And now he's going to try and go up the inside into Rivatsa on Wojciech Savinovic. Well, that's not any old driver that Sven Glatzel's trying to take there, and well, Savinovic using all of his experience in the Kier Optima just to keep Glatzel behind, but it's looking like the German driver having the race of his life. We're going to check in on Adam Bath as well once the uh, once the lap finishes, but Glatzel now with the slipstream, got that overspeed, now he's got the overlap. However, Alex, he is on the outside going into Tamburello. Yeah, he's going to have to sweep, sweep around and hold it there, which he does. Oh, it's very Wojciech. close. We'll have the inside ground now, and uh, his teammates going to try and come back through at the same time as well. So that's how went from attack to defence, around the outside, Chepi to throw it up the inside, he does, we're on board at the moment with Glatzel. Oh, we do not want the same thing that happened in the Porsche race. Happening there where they're hitting the second curve at Villeneuve very, very hard. 
and uh, look who's round the outside that Matthew Bunch trying that same move at Toza that he tried in the Porsche race trying to this time get round Ben Hackerson uh, but Bun firmly lodged in the top five this is one of the best performances we've seen so many drivers Alex who we've never seen this high up the order no he's doing a great great job he's um, in race one he's anyway bun. fantastic Wilshire Gertha doing a good job in eighth I don't think we've seen him in the series since I think it was Monza a couple of years ago um, for our Fowler Tech, nice to see them back up there. Uh, Pete Harris in the top 10 as well. It's going really well for CQR with Race Hub because they've got three drivers up in the top 20 with Bun Harrod and Paul Smith. Uh, Adam Bath came over the line 15. He's now behind. Is that Richard Gore? I think it is. It is, yeah. Bath doing a good job. He's already up three positions. And um, yeah, I mean, looking like he's moving forward, is our colleague, and that's what we like to see. Um, Bath has won, as we've said before, Club Series race. He goes down the inside into Rivatsa. And look at that for a, a move forcing his way through on Richard Coram. <laughs> you won't, don't, don't know whether to be horrified or delighted with that. As number 36 going slowly. Andreas Katz has got a slowdown, it oh, looks yeah. like. Big one That's as well. The German is going to suffer for that one. Former champion two times. And oh, that ended up at the rear of the field. Oh, just will not go, will it? Look at that. Shocking. Now he's going. Now he's going, I think. The worst, that is. Oh, now he's down in. Who's that who's just gone through? That's Daniel Kraft, who's 31st. Although there's a big gap in the field, isn't there, which was quite lucky for Cats. But did we see some accidents at the back, Alex? Because... Oh, who's who's that? I think that's... Uh, it wasn't Sutton. Not Sutton? All out of shape. I think it might well have been. Oh, Sutton's got damage and he's on the grass now. What happened to Can't Ashley? Why is he like that? Because his car was all over the place just a second ago. Let's get a replay of that. I don't think he can stay in the car, mate. Not very well. Went all the way around the outside oh, of the just, just tagged someone, lost control, hit the wall twice. Oh, yeah. Who did he hit? I'm not entirely sure, but whoever they was, they come off a lot, what, lot less damage than what Ash did. So, yeah. Not good for the, um, for the S-Line boys. He was going quickly out there as well as Tristan Bonnet. He started in 22nd place. He's now up to P15. Uh, sorry, P14. He's got his way past Richard Gore as well. And now he's on the back of Adam Bath. Gore trying to fight back. You then behind them, you've got Bond, Smith, Cuniff, Baker. Baker down in 19th place with a poor qualifying. He was seventh fastest in practice, Alex, and then um, just seemed to drop the ball a bit in, um, in the session that sets the grid. Yeah, yeah we missed as well the watching that replay back that Glatzel got to the lead was able to hold off um, Stillian and um, yeah then went on the attack on uh, Wojciech and uh, has the lead as he comes across the start finish line Wojciech's oh. got a great run he's in the slipstream again so we'll be trying to um, go back to the point well this is indeed a turn up for the books Sven Glatzel He's experienced in this Kia Optima, but he's a rookie in the BSR TC, and now he's fighting it out with two of the most experienced drivers in the history of this competition. He's run over to get involved. 500 races. There's contact between Glatzel and Czepolewski, but somehow he puts Czepolewski in a better position than it was before the contact, Alex. Exactly, <laughs> yeah. Ends up in second place there, holds on to it, plants that accelerator pedal, of course, front-wheel drive. Just get on that gas and go. Straightens the car up, lovely. He's done that. He's under an awful lot of pressure again from Glatzel. Glatzel doesn't want to let uh, Wojciech get away as he's now nine tenths of a second. Just wants to get past his teammate as soon as possible. Hackerson just waiting and seeing what's going on. He had an opportunity just a moment ago. Went to the inside. Nothing really came, but that's why there was a little bit of contact between Glatzel and uh, Cheppy. Look at the 51 car of Alex Everett as well. Welshman really, really flying here. And um, he started seventh. And up to fifth, so many drivers. Uh, this is the land of the opportunity, the BSR TC, and these guys are taking these opportunities. Drivers who are not normally, uh, don't get me wrong, the standard is extremely high in this series, but these drivers are not normally up there in race one, taking every single advantage that they can to, um, to get up there and put together a really, really solid race performance, and that is what we're seeing at the moment. Where's Glatzel going? I can see him disappearing every now and again. And it also, I see uh, Stellian getting closer and closer to Wojciech Svinovic now, uh, Alex. Yeah, um, oh, that's still sort of slow down, I think. 
And I think that was purely because he had connection problems going through the yeah. corner. So it judged it's him a serve, yeah, it's a serve a glitch it. more than anything. I didn't see him run over the inside too much, but yeah, it's cost him fun up and past. This set was in in front of uh, Tregertha, of course, Will Tregertha. Um, he's leading the um, the GT4 British GT4 championship as well with his teammate. They're doing and a cracking job. Alpha Tech today. Oh, just gives Glaxo a little nerf from behind, just to let him know that he's there. The top. It's worth pointing out, though, the top. The top 11 cars still separated by 5.1 seconds. I mean, it's crazy close. Yeah, fantastic, isn't it? In the BSR TC, um, it's a, it's a great race so far for Fanatec. As now uh, they've got Stephen Baxter also inside the top 10. So three Fanatec cars in the top 10. We've not seen anything remotely like that all season from them, and it's a fantastic job that they're doing. Uh, just to, to check on some of the drivers who started near the back, Ricardo Castellino is out as is Stuart McFadden, Lord Murray and Ashley Sutton are out as well. Uh, Kip Stevens is currently last, that's 47, so I don't know what's happened to Kip. Um, Adam Hadfield, 45th, I think there was a pit start, Nathan Davis, 41st. But Dave Chris is having a good race, 13 positions of 38. But so back past um, Bun, Bun trying to hold it round the outside. We're coming into the penultimate corner. Gets That's the a line. Good move. Back in front. Oh, Dragertha trying there. to capitalise on that. Take that and that the inside. Oh, Touring car action at its absolute best. That's all. Saves the car. And has to settle in behind Will. That was pretty strong from Dragertha, wasn't it? Yeah, but, um, yeah. But you know, I suppose that's what you sometimes have to do. But um, Glatzel's not going to be happy with that, is he? He was fighting for the lead. Just a few laps ago, he's been bumped around a little bit and bounced back down to uh, to get that slow down though, of course. Yeah, that's, that's the worst thing that could have happened. And you look at like Katz as well had the slow yeah. down. He's still in the 29th place. He's battling it out with Dan Craft down there. What's Dan Craft what doing? What are they doing? Right there? Dan Craft died 43rd. Oh dear. Yeah, those two are having a little private scrap. As, oh, in fact, they're with um, Robert Graham as well getting involved. So, uh, yeah, oh, battle's going all the way through the field. Where is Adam Bath? The answer is... Oh, I think he's just been hit, Alex. Um, a bit feisty with uh, Paul Smith, I think, maybe, out there. Oh, of course it was. Oh, no, it wasn't. It was... Um, who was that? Oh, there was Paul, it was Paul Smith. No, it wasn't. It was David Baker who hit him. Go on, Baker. <laughs> Baker's just Put done that on place. Baker's done that on purpose. <laughs> oh dear, uh, he won't be a, he won't be pleased with that. About all the people who hit him off the track. Oh. It's Baker, is it? Barn and um, sorry, Barn, uh, Glatzel and Tregertha again. I think Will might have a slowdown because he went a bit wide there over the chicane. That's a killer. That is He's probably pushed a little bit out there by Glatzel, but I think that's probably a bit payback from um, what we saw earlier on. And that's even allowed his um, Fanatec teammate Stephen Baxter to get by him now. All's fair in love and touring cars. And I think we've just seen it there. Uh, but yeah, Baxter having a cracking race. Really, really good indeed. Um, at the front, Wojciech Svinovic still leads. Um, with, as we come on to the... We're on the penultimate lap now. Um, Stelian Czeplewski still second. Third is Ben Hackerson. He's not... He's not let these two out of his sight at all. The boosted motorsport car looking fantastic out there. Alex Everett in fourth position. I believe this is his best ever performance in race one by far. Matthew Bunn in fifth as well. That could be pretty close to his best in this first race that's decided by qualifying. Sven Glatzel in sixth. He was momentarily into the lead, wasn't he? And um, yeah, he's not anymore. He's in sixth place. Pete Harrod seventh. Then eighth, Will Tregertha. Ninth, Jake Blackall. And then bringing up the rear of the top ten is Alexander Smolensky. His Baxter has dropped down. So Baxter was in 8th, Alex, and down to um, 11th now. Hoddis and Baker side by side as well. Hoddis has looked good in that boosted motorsport car. Dave Baker looking to make some positions up. He is the, um, the championship leader at the moment. 35 rounds. Oh, good from Bodice. That was great from Bodice, just drifting that back end around just to get the rotation he needs. 
think Tristan, I think um, a few people are going to argue with me on this one, but I think Tristan's boosting motorsport car is the best looking one out of the lot as well. And um, I have to say, they're all pretty nice. Um, it's Andrew who paints those, isn't he? Whitehead yeah, does a great it's job. Fantastic, really. I mean, that's. I can just about do um, blocks of colour and straight lines now. So that's fantastic from Andrew Whitehead to do those. Where is Whitehead? Oh, Glatzo up the inside of Bun coming out of the final corner. The side by side drag race for the start finish line. Of course, it's not going to mean anything this lap. We've got one more to go. Pete Harrod's in there as well. Looking to pick up the pieces if these two go to battle. Obviously, I'm seeing um, Matt in his um, in the S line livery. Although, of course, he is running for um, points are scored for a race hub, CQR race hub. So. Oh, Tregertha going through. Good move. Yeah, it was really good, wasn't it? The prize is Pete Harrod. And um, it takes a lot to do that. Former Club Series champion. Just a little word on Andrew Whitehead. We were talking about him in the paint. Uh, 41st at the moment. Started 37th. He's just. Yeah, he's just got ahead oh, of Scott Mountain. Dan Croft and uh, Rob, uh, Rob Graham um, coming together there. Look at this pack. We're like 26. Um, what were, no, what were we? 23rd down to about 20, 34th. This is a great and little battle. And you've got Cats and Hall and Ayres and Laidler and Foggy. He's down at the arse end of the field, if you pardon my yeah. French. It was any other word for it. Smithwich, he's going up towards the very anti alter then for the last time, and he's got a. Oh, he hasn't got much of an advantage now. I was about to say he had a decent advantage, but he's very cautious into that high chicane. Down the hill they come now with Stelian Chapolevsky. Looking yes. to see whether he can claim the victory. I think if he's smart, to be honest, I think he'll stay behind Wojciech Smithwich, get the points for the team. Yeah, with Gore sitting in 12th place, that's, you know, three really good results for the team. Good points. Here he comes the, then. Um, seems to be doing well in recent weeks. Here he comes then, Mojic Svidovic. Well, he's led most of this race. He came under a lot of pressure at the beginning. But he comes through in the end to take race one of the evening here, ahead of Czeplowski and Hackerson. Alex Everett's going to be fourth. And then, is it going to be Sven Glatzel getting fifth? It is. Bun got disqualified on the final lap, Andrew, before he crossed oh, the start finish line. Two races, two disqualified. Look at all that, lot. did you see that? Yeah. No, look, coming off the, the line altogether. That was, that was um, Harrod, Smolensky, Baxter, Blackhall and Gore, eight tenths apart. And uh, where's Adam? 21st in the end for oh, Adam Bath. I think he'll be, he'll be fairly happy with that. I think he'll be a little bit annoyed that he... Um, shuffle back a little bit there but again you, you know you give it out you're going to take a little bit oh good little battle at the back um, Christy and uh, Kiba Christy's going to get by no, sorry yeah. Kiba gets by right on the line Kiba gets by but still a good race for Dave it was a good race for Dave what happened to him at the end yeah quite a bit damaged so I'm not sure dropped, uh, dropped down only up seven places in the end he was up to um he was up very high in the field. I wonder if he crashed with Andrew Whitehead, you know, because Whitehead's last lap was a 2.09. Christie's last lap was a 2.12. Were they somewhere near each other? Find out, shall we? Not sure. I'm not sure. I think I can't find it, I'm afraid. Yeah, I believe we are joined by um, Adam Bath, is that right? Yes, hello. Indeed. Um, made it not look like fun out there? Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, it was. <laughs> so, started in 18th, um, got up to, you know, pretty close to the top 10, and then uh, Dave Baker appears. Uh, yeah, well, yeah, I've, I've got a few <laughs> players. I think I've got a few drivers marked now for the rest of the evening. Um, starts off with Richard Gore. I think I've, I've ruined that. Uh, relationship that was and then um yeah david baker came up the inside caught me on the wires there really i thought i got him i thought i was clear but then um yeah i got a hit up the rear and then uh, things went from bad to worse when um i tried to i tried to move on colin cuniff going into rivatsa so still 21st position i can't really argue with that considering what is a 51 car feel yeah well that's it hopefully um as well we can do you a favor with this reverse grid as well which is coming up now i'll just read out the finishing order very quickly um 
In fact, I won't. I think I went through most of that. Um, Alex will spin the wheel then, as we have to get off to the Porsche very, very quickly indeed. So, um, yeah, give us the um, give us the lowdown on the Wheel of Fortune. Yep, just letting the grid um, take over on screen. Um, at the moment, we'll see who's up for it, and then I'll bring the wheel up. I'm going to save the old voice for, for that one, I think, 50-odd cars. <laughs> but, um, yeah, it was a very, very competitive race. Hopefully the um I didn't think your move on Richard Gore was that bad, Adam, to be fair. I thought it was I thought it was a bit it was okay. Oh the tires were done by the end as well. <laughs> oh, warm out there. It, it was quite cool out there, so you'll be suffering later on probably. So we'll see if the um you're gonna stick around for our second Porsche race of the afternoon. Uh yes I will, I think, because there's there's usually quite a long warm up for uh race two. What right, here we go then. What you got let's, for us then? Right. Let's um, bust out the wheel and give it a spin. See how we end up. We just missed the fall. Uh, 38th place it's going to be. Well, that's Nathan Davis, who's rewarded for climbing eight positions. Here's the front row starting spot on the grid for race two. Uh, Roy Verke second, John Roberts third. Uh, Thorsten Helgeson in fourth and Gareth Hickling fifth. So that should be very interesting indeed. 18th place for Adam Bath in there. And we'll see what he thinks about that <laughs> when we well when we return in the iRacing MSA British Sim Races Touring Car Championship. We'll be back for the Porsche in, in just a minute or two.
Welcome back to BSR Race Night here on Apex Racing TV and iRacing Live. Andrew Woodhouse alongside Alex Simpson and we've got Adam Bath with us in the commentary box as well for this one. Um, Adam, I'll bring you in, mate. Um, obviously, first-hand experience of the track tonight. Now that it's a bit warmer out there, uh, do we think the drivers are going to be suffering with their tyres a bit more? Even though it's a pretty short race, they might still be suffering with them towards the end of the race. Yeah, the, the, the temperature's now up to 29 degrees Celsius on the track and uh, 27 in the air. Uh, thankfully, these Porsches are rear-wheel drive compared to the front-wheel drive that I'll be suffering with <laughs> uh, for race 2, 3 and 4. So they shouldn't have to worry about it as much as they will be in the Kias later on. But yeah, some welcome relief from the Kias now. Let's have a look at the Porsches. Have a look yeah, at the grid. Alex, I hope, that first, uh, I hope this race is as good as the first one because I really enjoyed that. Uh, yeah, I agree. Um, two, we've had two good first races tonight, so yeah. Right, well, look at the good then. Uh, San yeah, Kumo. Go San Kumo <laughs> on the pole, then Steve Hefford second. Uh, Frankie Myers in third, and then Stephen Minton in fourth. Ewan Tyndall in fifth. Sixth is David White. Seventh, Adam McNally. Eighth is Dan Blake. Then Miles Kalertzi in ninth. Tenth is uh, Dan Brown. Eleventh, Lewis Pivy. Twelfth, Andy Scheel. Thirteenth, Tommy Oscar. Fourteenth, Matt Bunn. Fifteenth, Josh Valentine. Then Josh Thompson in sixteenth. And Simon Landemore at the back in 17th place. Okay, yeah, then we seem to have everybody. Uh, in just a few seconds now, we'll get underway for round two of the evening. Motodromo, Enzo Edino Ferrari, and there is the green flag now. Start by Kumo, good start by Hefford. Punched up in the middle, it's a very slow car. Even Minton, I don't Steven know what's Minton. happened. Looked like almost pit limiter was on or something. Onto the grass goes Andy Shield. Comes back on. But he's got through Tamborello okay. Into really down to last. Oh, crash. Automat car, Oscar and Brown. Oh, Oscar has been in the wall then. And uh, Daniel Brown who's in fourth in the first race. Oh, no, Dan Blake's off. And oh, and you and Tyndall. A terrible start for the Automat team. Oh, and there's more handbags oh, going and, off. Uh, it's Maybe, and I think it was Oscar again, possibly. Yeah, it was. Oscar's car looks like a VW Beetle out there. No jokes about that anyway. Um, Alex, did you see what, what exactly happened at the start? Yeah, I just had a little look back on a replay. It just looks like they got sucked together. Um, you know how it happened, and then just pushed... Um, they just sort of... co forced them into the wall sort of thing. Couldn't get apart from each other, you know? Uh, just one of those unfortunate racing incidents. Sam Kumo, Alex, he's used to leading many races, he's used to winning championships, but not for quite some time, so this could be a test for him. Yeah, I think so. He, you know, wrote on the um, chat at the end of the race, you know, he really doesn't like this track, he just doesn't get it at all, struggling somewhat out there, so... Um, oh, who was that? Hefford going dr a bit crazy into... Um, Vince. Into Norman Gordon there. <laughs> well, he saves the car, but, um, yeah not without losing three or four places but yeah the just coming. needs to have a good race here really Bibby also out and into the pit so problem for Bibby yeah, I saw the damage on that car it looked, didn't look like it was going to be going much further after the incidents at the Viano chicane Heather down to ninth position after that moment at Rivazza and might even get passed by uh, by Josh Valentine before oh. oh no what's gone on here it's oh dear it's Clertzy McNally as well was all over the shot and Bun um, oh no Bun has sent Valentine but Again, he won't, be, he, won't Valentine. Be getting, he won't be getting Valentine's after that one. Valentine's <laughs> frequent flyer miles will be coming in, I think. He went in orbit in one of the races earlier on. What happened? Oh, Bunn loses the car. Oh, and Valentine just ramps over the front of the 911. And, there's no, and there is no self riding mechanism on that. Oh, dear. And that's both Josh's out again. Um, uh, it's just like the Renault, isn't it? not good if you call Josh your son John oh dear well what this means is that Sam Kumo leads but now it's a scrap between Frankie Myers and David White and then it's uh, Andy Shield and then Adam McNally who's continued on after what happened earlier Andy Shield's up six positions already I'm gonna get shouted at by someone no doubt but I can't remember whether it's Frankie Myers or Frankie Myers or, or what it is so somebody told us what it was and I can't remember, so I do apologise oh. in advance. What's as happened? It's all kicking off. And the chicane, all over oh. the shot. And Myers and, uh, and Shield are going to crash into each other, I can almost guarantee it. Shield flying down the inside. I'm 
absolutely scaring the hell out of David White. And uh, White has to take evasive action. Oh. Everything's, you know, I don't even pick the right race to join this one. Eh? I know, uh, McNally spun it again, by the way, just at the back, so oh. I saw that. Um, but yeah, over the line we go to and Sam Kuno, living life at the moment, lap three. He's um, in a seven second lead. I was about to say he's in the lead, oh, he was in second, for some reason Ewington Dow was being shown as the leader, but yeah. Oh, has uh, he just crashed off, has he? Because that is the, oh no. Oh no, he's still there, my son has been uh, playing Havoc with me. Yeah, but Andy Shields now in second, six seconds behind. I uh, don't know, uh, how quick is he? He was only a tenth of, he was actually, he was, pretty, he was pretty much slower than Sam Kuma on that last lap, so it'll be interesting to see if we can get anywhere near him. We're only a third of the way through the race. Off goes David, uh, Ranky Myers, he's off. Myers into the wall then, where's that? Is that the exit field now? Yes, it is. All that the, um, through there, really, the car just like uh, what, do its own separate thing. Somebody got UGE dead in the first race, had them. Oh yeah, I heard it. that. He got um, absolutely flipped over. It's exactly the same point coming off of Villeneuve. Uh, Hefford and Oscar now side by side, oh, with a perfectly clean car, and Oscar's car looks an absolute mess. Oscar, oh, oh dear, where's Hefford going? Where's he going? He must have hit the bumps on the inside. I've done that. Oh, a yeah, slow down yeah. penalty for that as well, unfortunately, just to boot, wide. nothing worse. <laughs> yeah. Oh dear. And okay. is trying to go up the inside into a very empty alto, which he's going to do, because Hefford's got no line coming into there at all. He gets slow downs for both, I think, at the Akron and the Nevada. He's slow down if you cut that inside, and also a slow down if you go too wide on the exit, so... Lose-lose situation for Hefford there. I'd to say Tommy Oscar, drum for the Automex team, representing a car that usually races around not kill These probably. Guys. These guys have been at that youth energy drink, haven't they? Lots of it, I think. Um, this, this race is absolutely crazy. And six laps to go. Kumo leads by six seconds. He was a second slower than Shield on that last lap, so maps dictate that uh, he will just hold on if uh, Shield continues to close in at the one second rate, so Shield may need to get a bit of a move. Oh, Bun's in the pits. Well, Kumo might need to get a move on as well, because Shield's only going to get quicker, you would imagine. Oscar's car. Is uh, Oscar up to third? Yes, third he is. in that Beetle. He's doing amazing. <laughs> no, I'm not even going to ask him. It's like 15th about a minute ago. Oscar fully loaded. Um, it, it, Oscar, that is the Super Legera version, isn't it? That's about, it's about six inches shorter than the one he started with. Uh, the no, Oscar, no jokes I don't know, about yeah. that at home, by the way. I know what you're thinking. Yeah, me. You and Tyndall and Dan Blake. Things kicking off as well between Frankie Mayers and uh, who's that behind? That is Simon Landemore as they exit the on Earth. Let's see. Might have been able to get ahead of Landemore. Good job there. How's Oscar going up into third place? What sort of lap times is he doing? Uh, yeah, last time around he did a fastest, fourth, man fastest on the lap track of the race. Last yeah. Lap. 45.592. That's because he's got much less car than everyone else. <laughs> How is he doing it? Oh, well, I guess it's because the engine's in the back, it's not affecting it. It's affecting it. He did hit the wall it. pretty square on actually, and sort of bounced off of it. I mean, you can obviously see the, the damage, but it, it doesn't seem to be affecting the it too much. The yeah, damage is his luggage to get back. Um, <laughs> yeah. You put your shop in. Imagine if he's flying after you. Oh dear. But he, yeah, that's about it. I mean, the rear of the car looks fine. 144.8. Yeah, yeah. 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 It was half a second quicker than what um, Andy was ahead, who was seven tenths quicker than Kumo as well. So, we struggled to get to these guys, but we give good it everything. The news for Sam is that he has picked up the pace when I said he had to, which by half a second. So, um, and at that pace, Adam, he'll definitely make it. Oh yeah, 4.7 second lead for Kumo now, and yeah, Shield was only 8 tenths of a second quick, or 7 tenths quick on that last lap, so uh, Kumo at that pace should be able to hold on, we've got, uh, what, 4.5 oh, four laps to go, and the gap's 4.5 seconds. David White's lapping, quick, lapping quickly out there as well, uh, 145.4, he was actually the third, third fastest man on the circuit that last time, he's in fourth overall. Uh, Steve Minton is the last of the runners at the minute in the 12th position. Cars out, Matt Bunn, uh, Josh Valentine, Josh Thompson, Lewis Bibby and Dan Brown. 
battle forming up here, guys, as well. This looks like Hefford leading this train of three. So 6th, 7th and 8th, Ewan Tyndall in 7th, Dan Blake 8th. Yep, and um, Hefford has got down to this battle, and Tyndall and uh, Blake have come forward towards it, so interesting to see if they can stick with Hefford, actually. But they can at the minute. all the stones and the gravel that's been deposited on the circuit even just in five laps all to go then here at Imola Enzo Edino Ferrari BSR race night here in the BSR Porsche Cup Andrew Woodhouse alongside Alex Simpson and um, guest commentator for this race uh, BSR TC driver I don't know <laughs> I'll see you kind um, <laughs> four seconds the gap between Sh Shield pick did pick up the pace again on that last lap he was Another nine tenths taken out by uh, Sam Kumo, and the gap is 3.8 seconds. It's going to be close in that final lap, isn't it? Yeah. He's going to have a he's going to have half a chance, isn't he? Um, but he needs to keep the pace up, the Shield. Yeah, he can't let off just because obviously uh, Tommy's coming at a rate of knots as well. And the minute he sort of gives up is the minute that he's going to be under pressure for uh, getting knocked off of the second place spot. You know. Tommy's literally suffering no ill effect of that, um, of that damage, is he? Having, having much less of much less car than he had I don't the know. The I mean, he had what was it, 12 seconds or something like that at the end of the last race. So I think he is affected slightly. He took pole by position by eight tenths of a second. So he was last at one point. Though. Yeah, he's only a couple way. of tenths quicker than Andy at this point. So maybe, maybe a little bit. Yeah. In fairness, in the first race, they were all tripping over each other as well, weren't they? So well, true. true. Um, I, I don't think he's ever. Don't get me wrong. I think he would have won, but. I don't think you'd have quite that advantage if they weren't um, all hitting each other and whatever. But here's um, Tindall. He's out, yeah. Now have a little look. Now Hefford does. Oh, oh, no. oh, no, I think he tried the dummy. I think he dummied himself. That's the position for Dan Blake. He's up into seventh. Oh, me, Hefford, pretty sideways. Oh, Tindall has spun it again. Oh, no, he's fantastic. It's the worst thing you can do. Forever will that be known as Bottas dip. It's really bad as well. And it's so easy to do on iRacing, isn't it? Your tyres get hot. You know, it's just like, whoop, around she goes again. The worst part about that is you can literally count on one hand the amount of bot mistakes Bottas has made in his career, I think, and he's going oh, no. to forever have that in his pocket. Um, the lead is down to 2.7, gentlemen. Landemore's out, by the way. He's got disqualified. Oh. I'm amazed yeah, no one else has. seven seconds that lap as well, so really, really picked it up. Down four to nine for um, for Shells, and then um, Kumo forty, six, well, a forty six six. So yeah, really bad lap for him. So a mistake slightly. somewhere in that lap for Kumo. Maybe starting to feel the pressure a little bit with this gap ever decreasing. Just three laps to go. It was a slightly bad lap for, for Kumo, but it's a very good lap for. Andy Shiel, wasn't it? 44.9, that was his fastest lap of the race. And uh, the uh, only beaten, actually, we just had a new fastest lap by Tommy Osgard with a um, 144.7 that last lap. He's flying. That cheese and wine car of Kumo is on the grill, and the grill is slowly starting to heat up. Will it be melted cheese on toast by the end of the day? Or will it become finished rare bit? He's, he's really, really feeling the pressure now. See that? It, it's horrible, isn't it, Alex? You see that relative coming down. You know, some, you know, business is about to pick up. Another you nine you're, tenths of a second. I bet Alex, you're the one usually doing the chasing rather than the one getting chased. Ah, I've had it both ways, to be honest. Um, you know, it's a great feeling when you're hunting someone down. I have to say, you really. Get the bit between your teeth and push everywhere, and um, yeah, and then when um, yeah, it is the worst when you're seeing that time just slowly slip away. You're seeing the times come down, so nothing is worse than the pressure on the last lap when somebody's about a second a lap quicker and they're about one second away. Sam does have a lot of experience though, and if there's one thing you can count on is that um, going to use all of that if and when Andy Shield gets to him. Just to take take your mind back to Philip Island, he did a good job of defending there. Kept got a podium, I think, as a result. 
Gap down to 1.1 seconds as we are now one and a half laps away. It's now under a second, actually. He's just taken out two temps in one corner here. Andy Shield. Definitely be done. For Shield. Car number 007. Police spies a victory. Really? Mistake through the chicane. Oh. Big mistake, oh. actually. Sideways. Cost him three tenths of a second. And, and now that gives Oscar some more encouragement. Yeah, there's only 1.5 seconds back, so any more mistakes from um, Andy, otherwise he's going to come under the cosh. Oh, that's a lock-up by Sam, and that's a few temps lost, so surely there as he went wide on the exit of Ravazza. Big lock-up by Oscar as well, he's trying hard there. In oh, third. look at him drifting out of that final corner, that looked epic. With the, with the car that's so badly damaged. On to the uh, final lap then. Here at Imola, fantastic race here in the uh, BSR Porsche Cup. 46-4 for Sam, 45-6. So it wasn't too much uh, taken out on that last lap by Andy Shield, but he is within a second now. I think his only chance, I think it's probably going to have to be Ravazza. He's not close enough to get in, to get anywhere near Sam in the opening sector anyway. I don't think he's going to be able to do it into the outer either. So Toza then, low corner on the 50 miles an hour and punching it up the hill towards Piratella this is one of my favourite points on the course because it's very difficult it's a little bit blind as well really spot that exit curve power it out of there down the hill towards Aqua Minerale double apex right hander now second one looks quite straightforward but it tightens on the exit as well it marginalizes you really it was wide there let's hope he didn't get slowed down i think he's okay but it's very very close now and i think adam this is going to be i think your oh. prophecy might be coming true here not all that oscar either he's coming along oh. with these guys and the automatic car might even fancy a second position second oscar place here. right with andy shield goodness me on his rear end. Kumo's just going to have to defend the inside here. I think it's his only hope into Rivazza. And he does. Here comes Oscar. Goes wide. Oscar on the inside of Shield. They're going to hit each other, surely. No, they're not. Oh, oh Shield oh. drifts in front of Oscar. Coming out of the final corner then. Sam Kumo. He's going to win here okay. at Imola. Great race. What a win for the Finn. And Andy Shield. Andy Shield and Tommy Oscar, they came from 12th and 13th. Oscar started 13th, Alex. Involved in some two crashes. He was nearly last in the race, and to come through and nearly win it, well, that is just fantastic. Well, have a good close little battle across the line as well. You and Tindall couldn't quite get McNally. That was a close one, he just couldn't recover after these two spins. Frankie Mays is going to come across and take you through the finishing order then. In fact, Adam, you can do that if you like. I like the session. <laughs> oh, well, that's fine. Sam Kubo then takes the win by four tenths of a second over Andy Shield. Third is Tommy Oscar. Fourth, David White. Miles Clutesley in the top five again. Steve Hefford, sixth. Dan Blake, seventh. Adam McNally, eighth. Ewan Tyndall, ninth. Frankie Mayers in tenth. Stephen Minton in eleventh. And then the retirement, Simon Landemore, Matt Bunn, Josh Thompson, Josh Valentine, Daniel Brown and Lewis Bibby. Um, well, Adam, thank you very much for joining us, mate. Good luck for the rest of the evening. I'm sure we'll speak to you later on. Thank you very much, yeah. Cheers. Alex, that was a cracking race, wasn't it? Yeah, a great end. way to um, end the uh, support series for the night. So, could have gone anywhere. I think, actually, if... Um if Ostergaard hadn't got there, I think um, Andy would have won that. But the fact that he got there as well at the same time, it just gave Andy a little something else to worry about going into that final uh, couple of corners. And it was like, oh, couldn't go quite as aggressive as he wanted to. Could have easily lost both places. So, yeah, fantastic race. And, you know, of course, happy for um, our teammate to uh, pick yeah. up a win. Definitely our broadcast colleague and our teammate up um, race two of the evening here at Imola. I'm going to be controversial and say I think she'll was I don't think she was quite close enough um, as he would have liked I think into into Rivazza because it's not one that you can always really have a dive into Oscar though took advantage beautifully into that final corner right everybody we'll be back then we've got three Kia races 
on tap for the rest of the night. So join us back here in the same place just in a few minutes' time for more from the iRacing MSA British Sim Racers Touring Car Championship.
Simulated racing can be awesome, but can also be kind of a free-for-all. Interestingly, auto racing faced the same problem in its earlier days. Whether it was on the back roads, the beaches, or the city streets, the racing was fun. But there was always a certain level of chaos and danger, until some folks came along and put some order to all of this. Stuff like official racetracks, regulations about weight and equipment, and enforcement of standards. That's what gave us high-speed excitement, fast-paced action, and photo finishes. That's when racing became racing. The guys over at iRacing.com have made the same transformation in the world of sim racing. Sure, they've got the most accurate tracks and realistic cars out there, but that's just the start. See, iRacing analyzes the performance and results of each driver in every race. So you can be sure you're always placed in races where the competition will be tight. And that those reckless drivers who ruin it for us all are kept in the pits. Not to mention that with over 45,000 active members already in their vast community, you can find races day and night. So you can always get in on the action. You can even join a league of your favorite series. And since updates are always automatic, you don't have to worry about software and can focus on the track. Zip up your fire suit and check out iRacing.com. iRacing.com is a sim racing game that combines a true-to-life racing experience with an online community of virtual racers from all over the globe. iRacing offers a multitude of officially licensed cars and tracks, laser scanned with millimeter accuracy. Their car models and mechanical systems are based on real-world physics and engineered in cooperation with manufacturers and race teams iRacing's web-based interface allows members to compare stats and test drive any combination of car and track instantly. Their skill license system ranges from rookie to pro, ensuring members are always pitted against those with similar skill sets. Members are able to sign up for a weekly race series, compete in time trials, host a private race with friends, and participate in racing leagues created and run by the community. With over 60,000 members, iRacing works in partnership with renowned motorsport organizations like SRO Motorsports Group to deliver virtual races based on the real-life Blancpain GT Series. iRacing's Blancpain Endurance Series features team racing, giving members the ability to build a team and participate in races ranging from 3 hours to 24 hours. Additional partners include NASCAR, IMSA, V8 Supercars, IndyCar, allowing members to race in their very own 24 hours of Spa, Bathurst 1000, Daytona 500, and many more. iRacing.com, delivering the most authentic racing experience short of getting into a real race car.
Hello again everybody, welcome back to BSR Race Night. Got the BSR TC for you. We're at round two of the evening from the Autodromo Enzo Idino Ferrari in Italy. Otherwise known of course as Imola Andrew Woodhouse alongside um, Double R Racing World Championship driver Alex Simpson. Um, probably not for much longer mate. No, but, not um, for long. <laughs> but, but he's still there for now anyway. Um, overcast conditions for this one anyway. And uh, well... It's going to be a different challenge for the drivers, isn't it? If the drivers were saying that the tyres were in difficulties after after race one, then uh, they might be eased a little with this condition. I would think they'd be all right here. 18 degrees track temperature we're here in, so yeah, should be should be fine. I would think, and no real issues there. We're just see, speaking to our colleague Adam Bath. It's quite slippery out there for the drivers on the first lap. So. Um, going to see the usual things. We're not going to see anything to the heights of, I think it was Suzuka in season six, Alex, where <laughs> they got to turn two and everyone just crashed off. Yeah, that was that was fun. We've had a few like that. I think Spa as well, <laughs> um, going up a rouge. Oh dear. Just everyone just drifting up there. So. Canada. Yeah. Oh dear, some, I remember Canada in the over ones. Obviously, Canada in the overcast conditions, race one. Uh, there were just cars flying everywhere. I remember Paul Smith was on his roof in the middle of the circuit somewhere. Um, take you through the, the starting grid then for this uh, this race meeting. Uh, Nathan Davis is going to be on pole position after getting the role of the reverse grid wheel. Roy Verke in second. John Roberts third. Thorstein Helgerson is in fourth. Fifth is Gareth Hickling. Sixth is Josh Thompson. Then Max Wright in seventh. Robert Graham eighth. Jamie Ayres ninth. And Nicole Foggy. In 10th, Andreas Katz is 13th, Daniel Kraft is 15th, Aaron Adabath is 18th, that's the same place he started in race 1. Uh, Dennis Melch is 20th, Magic Sakovic 23rd, David Baker 27th, Alex Smolenski is 32nd. We're almost ready then. We'll start on round 2. Green, green, green! We're away again here at Imola. Great start by Roy Viverke. They get swallowed up here by Bostein Helgerson. But who's on the boosted motorsport car? That is John Roberts. Go up in second position. All around the outside goes Roy Viverke. He takes second place back. Does the Belgian. Fantastic stuff there. And Alex, is everyone has everyone survived? Um, I think so. So far, I'm not seeing any issues. A few people obviously starting from the pits. But um, yeah, looks like a. Uh, oh no! <laughs> Spoke too soon. Uh, oh. Helgerson's around. Oh, it's uh, 44 as well. That's Blake. Uncle Blake's been off. Wojciech Svidovic nearly rear ends Stelian Cepalewski into the hairpin. Verka into the lead now. Davis had some major problem as well. What happened to Davis? Managed to collect the car up. Um, he's still in second oh, place, but I think it's just the cold weather just caught him there. Under a lot of pressure from John Roberts. Roy Viverke won a race in this series, didn't he? The, uh, the other week, his first one of his career. Oh, the inside goes Josh Thompson. That's a good move there. In the Fanatic car, we know how quick that is. So, Michael looking Hall. strong. Cats in seventh. Good. Hall, just uh, ahead of him. Oh, you can see everybody just uh, just breaking and the rears all over the shot at the minute. So, still, you know, three quarters of a lap down and um, they're struggling out there. Roy's look like the only car. He looks like he's on completely different tyres to everyone else. Loving it out there. Can we check it? Uh, but yeah, Roy Verke absolutely going, going like a train here. And he is quick, the Belgian driver, when he, uh, he really gets his head down. We'll see if he can do that now. He's got a good advantage at the minute, hasn't he, over Nathan Davies, who's trying to recover himself there. As um, somebody has had an issue. Uh, was that... It was an automat car, I think, Alex, that's out. I think it's... Uh, I think Graham's had problems. And it looks like there's also problems for Andrew Whitehead as well. It looks like he might have slowed down. Bath and McIntyre side by side as well. Going into um, turn one. Bath slips through, gets himself up and into uh, 11th place. Ross McFarlane ahead of him now. So good start from uh, our commentating colleague. Don't tell him I said this, but he is quite good, isn't he? Well, we did say that off air as well. He's so <laughs> had a little practice. Jumped in, he could be very quick. So. I'll tell you what, if he practiced, he would be very good. <laughs> the, and I, I, I think that's the thing, isn't it? Um, oh, McIntyre, though. Trying for the cutback here. Look at the three wide in the background. 
Perhaps that will trigger a third strike instead of David Baker. I believe it is. Look at that train, though. That is very close. Yeah, Baker Gertha. just on the... Oh. Uh, Baker holds onto that. Trigertha past Atkinson. Atkinson goes wide. Look at the gaggle behind as well. That's the thing. That's that thing I was on about there. Sakovic is in there. Oh, it's Smith, Conniff, Glatzel's in there as well. Oh, no. I'm on the here, slow down, never good. Here we go. Here we go. Three wide into the very anti alta. Patrick Zakovic using his brain there because that was never ever going to work in a million years. That's Wilcher Goethe with the slowdown. And it's a very slow slowdown. Indeed for Chagurtha. The man who is leading the GT4 championship in the British GTs. Thompson surely with an opportunity for second place this time. He's in the slipstream of Davis, no one behind, they've got one and a half seconds, here he comes to the outside which will become the inside. However, Becky leads by two seconds then. And these two going to battle, well this could end in tears because <laughs> in both of these men in, in bother in the past several times. Yeah, both drivers do a little bit of um, a bit of real racing. Of course, um, young Josh in the carts and um, Davis does a bit of rallying. Oh, I didn't know that, he kept that one quiet. There you go. At least, at least, maybe I haven't been paying attention, I don't know. But That's Nathan why he likes to be on the grass a lot, old um, oh, Nathan. Nathan. It's home, uh, you know, he understands it more there. You're not allowed to say that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and speaking of the grass, there goes Thompson. I don't think there's much grass in the karting circuit. No. Not, not in the bit you're supposed to be on, anyway. But yeah, oh, what's this a bit further back, 11th and 12th place, so McIntyre and... And Bath again going at oh, it. They're right behind McFarlane now as well. All this is doing, by the way, Alex, is it's helping Roger Burke out. He's extended the lead a bit more. Yeah, the last lap they actually closed in on him, but um, yeah, this time they won't for sure. Oh, McIntyre a bit deep into Aqua Minerali. That's on the wall path. Drivers struggling to move forward, like Castrolido 33rd. Vidovic 32nd, Sutton 24th, so, um, Gore 26th. Notice it's quite a clear, uh, Anibath taking a very smart line into the Variante Alta, going quite tight on the first part, really almost holding back so he doesn't actually have to hit the kerb on the second part. Which saved the tyres a little bit. Yeah, to be fair, that's how I try and take it as well. Uh, it just feels a bit. Um, it's like get a better run out of there, you know, if you want a chance for an overtake later on down the hip, you know, um, that's really the sort of the line you have to take. Uh, what's Katz doing? Katz looks like he's shaping up a move on Gareth Hicklin. Here he comes up the inside onto the um, brakes. Car squirms underneath braking, Good move. but gets the uh, gets the move complete. Great job. And now Hicklin comes under pressure from Jamie Ayres behind as well. Hole, hole. I was going to get both. Great move from Hull. Hickling, has Hickling got damage? Oh, he was really squirming around. His car is all over the place, it's Gareth Hickling's. And look at, is that Foggy? No, it's McIntyre, uh, not McIntyre, McFarlane. Well, and McIntyre, in fact, side by side. Here we go, then. Pair of talent. Oh! <laughs> Happened to McIntyre, big twitch, massive, massive twitch. Hey, me. Well, he saved it. Side by side now with Adam Bath. And he holds it. Up there by McIntyre just to recover. Uh, what's going on a bit further down the field? Oh, look at this. Paul Smith and Woodhouse. Very, very close together indeed. And you've also got there Atkinson. They've got ahead of them, Daxel and um, oh, Baker. Oh no! It's a spin at the chicane. It was somebody getting a bit of help. It was Colin Cunniff. Colin, Colin Cunniff who was around. And I'm not sure who it was that actually put him there. It looks oh, like no. um, Baxter. Stephen Baxter. Who, Side the track. Oh, Thompson coming for the lead then on Viverke. Thompson is through. 
We'll show that on the replay. We're just seeing that now with oh, um, Paul no. Cunniff. Oh, is turned by Davies. Oh. And, um, Davies Here we go then. We're about to see all that on the replay. We missed it live. But yeah, that Fnatic car definitely looking very, very strong today. Thompson using it well. It's a great run. Looking up the inside, then the outside, then back to the inside again. <laughs> Late on the brakes. Turns it in, and um, like you say, Davis just trying to follow him through. Oh, that's just awkward there. I think, um, I don't know about you, but I think um, Davis had a right. He was long side yeah. there, and Viferke squeezed him just a little bit, but it might have been a little bit of net code dragging them together. We've seen that a few times. It might have been that he didn't see him, and he just didn't want to move out to the... He didn't want to yield in the end, so... Yeah, Davis definitely had the right to be there, no question. That's um, having a good race as well this time, considering what happened the last time, of course, with um, the slowdown that pushed him all the way back down to sort of 20-odd place. Laura Bond's flying out there as well. She's made up uh, eight positions. David Baker behind her has made up 12. And there behind Dennis Melcher, who's a veteran of the Club 73 Touring Car Championship. He usually drives the Jetta Alex. He's got a bit more power under his right foot this time. Yeah, it's funny to think that when you're talking about the Kia, but it is quick, you know. These things will do 170 miles an hour, so... Yeah, that's it, it'll outstrip a DTM car almost in a straight line, but... Yeah. And, they, um, through the, and you know what, through the corners it's not terrible either, let's be honest. It's not it's not slow through the corners, it's just awkward sometimes. It's just it? front-wheel drive, isn't it? Yeah, It just does what front-wheel drive does, so... Yeah. Um, just on board with Bond a minute, she's got a good oh, run here on Melcher, will she no go for it? Way. No, she gets out of it quite early. I thought Adam was going for a big dive there on, um, on Max Wright, but he wasn't quite close enough. Oh, who's this? They're Hick uh, it's Hickling and McFarlane, very close together. And look at that, in fact, just in front of them, uh, it's Roberts, Roberts and Hall. I think Hall got pushed a little bit wide, and that might allow Jamie Ayres to get a position. Both side by side, it's a good battle this, and look behind her, that gaggle. Sorry to keep... Uh, it's alright, no, no. keep pushing you to different things. Hall and Ayres get really physical into the Piratella. And Ayres toughing it out, it's not easy to run with Michael Hall. Still He's up, in that still, kind of mood. Oh, I thought he just had the overlap there, but not quite, so GT Omega car has to settle in behind. Now they've got this one behind them as well, Bath and oh, Bath and McFarlane. And then you've got Ayres, sorry, not Ayres, um, Melchard. Melchard, Platzel and, uh, and Baker and Bond. Oh, Melchard. Melchard can absolutely um, fall out of that place into the chicane. And look at this in front there, McIntyre, is he going to go for it on Hickley? thinking about it. It's precious little he can do though really into Rivazza from that far back anyway. Bond and Melcher though with uh, Glatzel behind making it awkward. Very very difficult there isn't it? They've got Smith and Sutton coming up behind as well. And they'll be in the mix quickly. Two Sutton's laps to go though guys. Sutton's got damage. Uh, should we go on board? I'll tell you what, should we go on board with Adam Bath for this lap? Oh he's trying to go Round the outside of Max Wright, me and Max Wright had a crash here actually in uh, the club series. Oh, around the outside, who was that? That was that McFarlane. Was McFarlane. That was excellent, just appeared on our left hand side, Ross McFarlane. Bath's going to fight back into Villeneuve. Oh, well, no he isn't, because he's gone off. He had to do that to avoid um, McFarlane there, he would have hit him. We'll get slowed down for that. He has got a little bit of a gap behind him, so he should be able to serve. That's Laura Bond behind now, but we'll come away it's still from that and we'll switch up because it's getting pretty tasty up the front, uh, Andrew. It's still a very, very good um, position for him, but yeah, Nathan Davis is all over Josh Thompson then. The battle for race victory, we've got one and a half laps to go. They've had a fantastic race, both of them. That's coming up both of them pretty quick as well, I have to say, so we might have a bit of a... Bit of another um, thrilling last lap here. And Royce still up there as well in case anything goes off between these three. Good race for Roy, isn't it? He got past a few laps ago and he's only two seconds behind. Yeah, yeah, exactly. 
He's comfortable there as well. He's not going to lose another one. 4.6 seconds to Hall now, so top four really broke away. Yeah, fantastic job by them. And uh, Josh Thompson. Well, this will be his first PSRTC win if, he'll t if he can take it. In his first season in the in the Kier Optima, I believe, ever. Looks like we lost Alex ever at disqualification. Oh, that's gutting for him because he was he had such a good first race. Did Everett? He was in 33rd place. And he came to grief. Uh, he might have had a contact with Daniel Kraft actually, um, Alex. Because Kraft's car looks oh wide there for Thompson. Makes oh, the mistake through the first corner. That's really going to let Davis get a run. Will he think Endless. about it into Villeneuve? It's going to be a late move if he does. Oh, oh he does. See how much the car is sliding now. The rear end. It's a really, it's a really cool car. Oh, God, Davis is, Davis is going for it on the inside into Toza. Really Bottom surprising Bond. him. Bond also out, unfortunately, on the last oh, lap. That's oh, a shame. Side, side by side. This. Wheel to wheel, mirror to mirror. Davis and Thompson. Davis really surprised Thompson. Now he goes inside to Piratella. Thompson trying to get the cutback. Oh, he turns Nathan Davis around, and that's ended precisely how we did. Oh, he's got disqualified from it as well. Cats is all over the place, Alex as well. Davis out. Oh, it's going to be disappointing. That might be a penalty. I would imagine it will be. Although we'll have to see exactly how that goes on the in the stewards meeting, but. Josh Thompson's not going to care about that that much, at least. Because, of course, oh, look at the damage on Katz's car, Alex. He's got real bad suspension damage. Yeah, he's twitching around all over the place. wonder Belly. if he just caught, um, did he just catch oh. Davis? Possibly. On the way through. Barely driving a straight line, Andreas Katz. He might lose out to Rod Verke here, but Josh Thompson, at least for now, is going to take home race two of the evening here at Imola. You're right, Verke's going to get second. Roy Verke from Belgium comes through and converts that second place on the grid into second place in the race. Look at this group from about 10th place. Who's going to get what there? I've got no idea. I'm not sure that. Uh, there is also. Oh my goodness me. Well, I'm not surprised. Under the line. <laughs> Adam Bath, please don't tell me you got disqualified on the last one. I did, trying to overtake all of those guys. Oh. <laughs> Alex, do we have the replay? And there's a blockage now into turn one. Everybody's just flying in there as well, so let's get off that. I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll <laughs> have a quick, we'll just nip back and we'll go and have a look at their replay and see what we think of the uh, lot, that final incident. I don't think I'm going to... Well, I might be able to see it. Let's have a look. Compate. Side by side, of course. Where was it? It's a Rivazza. Well, I'm just actually looking at the um, the leaders that come together. We're on board with Josh. Tries to get the undercut. Yeah. I have to say, I mean... Um, got to oh, put please. that one on Josh. He tried the undercut, but, the, but Davis was there. You know? Yeah. He, and literally he just drove through him, so... And he can't vanish, can he? No. And I've just seen, I've just seen what happened to Adam. You, you need to go and have a look at that. So we'll we'll do that. They all end up having a bit of a crash, and Adam, Adam literally almost gained seven positions in two corners, and got disqualified because somebody just tapped him. I think. That was unlucky, mate. That was. Uh, it's so close from home. <laughs> Oh, no. So many, so many places there. Just I knew, I knew that there was an off track that I got the lap before because I thought it was the final lap, um, and then uh, that came back to haunt me at the very end. That, that could have been what? That could have been eight. Could have been eight, yeah. But um, that's going to be me at the back now for race three. <laughs> oh, sorry, Adam. I shouldn't laugh. But did you see it though? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just yeah, the, exactly. you could just it's imagine just the annoying. voice. In, you could just imagine the voice in your head going yes, and then. <laughs> Oh, no. 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 Did All you know right. you were on the limit then? I knew. I didn't realise I was that close. To be was it fair. a 4x? Was it? It was a 4x. Yeah, oh. that got me to. Um, that got me to 12. It was the tiniest little tap as well, wasn't it? Oh, well, well. Adam, Adam, as you are here, and we like to save um, Andrew's voice, take us through the final standings, mate. Oh yeah, okay. Uh, so race victory goes to Josh Thompson. So it isn't all bad in the 
PSR TC if your name's Josh. Uh, Roy Verke finishes second, Andreas Katz third, Michael Hall fourth, John Robertson fifth. Credit to Jack McIntyre in sixth. He was keeping everyone bunched together, including me, uh, until that uh, final corner. Uh, Jamie Ayres in eighth, Max Wright ninth, David Baker in tenth. Uh, then we'll just say 11th place is me, um, but no, it's Ross McFarlane. Uh, 12th, Sven Glatzel, 13th, Ash Sutton. There's Paul Smith. That's two 14th places in a row. Uh, for the man from Yorkshire, uh, Dennis Melcher, 15th. 16th, Tristan Bodder, 17th, Alex Malensky, 18th, Mark Woodhouse, 19th, Stuart Atkinson, 20th, Richard Gore, uh, 21st, Stephen Baxter, 22nd, Stelian Chapolevsky, 23rd, Jake Blackhall, 24th, Ben Hackerson, 25th, Pete Harrod. There's Wojciech Svidovic in 26th place, proving today that um, it's not too easy to overtake around a similar circuit. Dan Craft, 27th, Magic Sakovic, 28th, 29th, Matt Bunn, 30th, for Scott Malcolm, 31st, Kip Stevens. 32nd, Will Trigurfa with Matthew Kiba, 33rd, Lorne Murray, 34th, 35th, Nicole Foggy, 36th, uh, Adam Hadfield, 37th, Rusty Laidler, 38th, Andrew Whitehead, 39th, Simon Roden, 40th, Colin Cunniff, 41st, Ricardo Castroledo, 42nd, Nathan Davis, then in Ad it's Adam Baffin, 43rd position. Uh, with Laura Bond in 44th, Cesaro Rizzo, 45th, Dave Christie in 46th, one lap down, so we do get a full. It will be Dave on the pole. And then Alex Everett, 47th, two laps down. Uh, Rob Graham, five laps down. Helgerson, seven laps down. And then were Michael Blake and Stuart, uh, Stuart McFadden the two cars that were off at Villeneuve on lap one, were they? Uh, Blake was off, yeah. I didn't see what happened to McFadden. Ah, okay. One um, question I will ask, though, is that even You'll have to get your binoculars out to see the starting grid, the even starting if, lights. Even if I'm disqualified and, say, Christy gets the pole, does that still mean I'm starting in last? I think... Oh... We'll find I, out. Think, I think so. I'm not. <laughs> yeah, we'll hope for a full for you just in case as well. Okay. <laughs> 43rd. Oh, it's dude. a good question, though. I, 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 hmm, I, I would imagine so. Well, let's find yeah. out what the will um, says. And, uh, yeah, we'll see. Oh, well, the disadvantage of it being a full and me starting at the back is that I'll have the fast guys all around me. It's uh, nowhere near a full, so that's irrelevant now. <laughs> 30th place. That is Scott Malcolm. Malcolm. He's going to be on the pole. Uh, second will be Matt Bunt. 13th, Magic Sakovic. 4th, Dan Crafts. Void Jacks, Vidovic, and 5th. So actually, uh, the fast guys... Oh, are some fast guys at the front there. They're actually going to be at the front, yeah. So, wow. Yeah. Well, that's going to be um, that's going to be really good, I reckon. Uh, two races down. Two more to go here at Imola in the iRacing MSA British Sim Racers Touring Car Championship. So stay with us if you want some more exciting touring car action. I know we do. We'll see you in a bit.
Simulated racing can be awesome, but can also be kind of a free-for-all. Interestingly, auto racing faced the same problem in its earlier days. Whether it was on the back roads, the beaches, or the city streets, the racing was fun. But there was always a certain level of chaos and danger, until some folks came along and put some order to all of this. Stuff like official racetracks, regulations about weight and equipment, and enforcement of standards. That's what gave us high-speed excitement, fast-paced action, and photo finishes. That's when racing became racing. The guys over at iRacing.com have made the same transformation in the world of sim racing. Sure, they've got the most accurate tracks and realistic cars out there, but that's just the start. See, iRacing analyzes the performance and results of each driver in every race. So you can be sure you're always placed in races where the competition will be tight, and that those reckless drivers who ruin it for us all are kept in the pits. Not to mention that with over 45,000 active members already in their vast community, you can find races day and night, so you can always get in on the action. You can even join a league of your favorite series. And since updates are always automatic, you don't have to worry about software and can focus on the track. Zip up your fire suit and check out iRacing.com. iRacing.com is a sim racing game that combines a true-to-life racing experience with an online community of virtual racers from all over the globe. iRacing offers a multitude of officially licensed cars and tracks, laser scanned with millimeter accuracy. Their car models and mechanical systems are based on real-world physics and engineered in cooperation with manufacturers and race teams iRacing's web-based interface allows members to compare stats and test drive any combination of car and track instantly. Their skill license system ranges from rookie to pro, ensuring members are always pitted against those with similar skill sets. Members are able to sign up for a weekly race series, compete in time trials, host a private race with friends, and participate in racing leagues created and run by the community. With over 60,000 members, iRacing works in partnership with renowned motorsport organizations like SRO Motorsports Group to deliver virtual races based on the real-life Blancpain GT Series. iRacing's Blancpain Endurance Series features team racing, giving members the ability to build a team and participate in races ranging from 3 hours to 24 hours. Additional partners include NASCAR, IMSA, V8 Supercars, IndyCar, allowing members to race in their very own 24 hours of Spa, Bathurst 1000, Daytona 500, and many more. iRacing.com, delivering the most authentic racing experience short of getting into a real race car.
Welcome back to Imola, and we have got the sun cream out. It, it is shining here, it is bright, it is hot. 32 degrees is now the air temperature, 48 degrees is the track temperature, so the drivers are going to have to work extra hard to conserve their tyres in round three of the evening of the Iris in MSA British Sim Racers Touring Car Championship. Hello again, Andrew Woodhouse alongside Alex Simpson, and um, Alex, that is really going to be the key here, isn't it? But it's, it's one thing saying conserve the tyres it's quite another thing doing it amongst a 50 car field well yeah exactly um i don't think you've got any chance to be honest you, you've got to go at it you know um completely and utterly with this pack around you so um it's the best you can really so just avoid lock lock ups and things like that and wheel spin and yeah that's all you can really try and do yeah, we go eight lap race, we'll take you down to the grid. Then Scott Malcolm on pole position for Automec. Matt Bunn in second. Third is Magic Sakovic. Fourth is Daniel Kraft with Wojciech Svidovic in fifth. Pete Harrod sixth. Seventh is Ben Hackerson. Eighth, Jake Blackall. Stalin Czeplowski ninth. And Stephen Baxter rounds out the top ten. If we go back and see the, um, the winner of the last race, then Josh Thompson, he starts in 30th. Roy Verke 29th. Andres Katz 28th. Aaron Adam Bath, well, it's 43rd for him. It's going to be very, very difficult indeed to make make his way up. The best he can hope for, really, is a reverse grid pole. Drivers are ready. And the red lights are going to come on any second now here at Imola. Green, green, green. The green light is on. Our three is underway, it's a pretty even start at the front. Scott Malcolm's got away well. Matthew Bunn's going to have a look into turn one if Scott Malcolm does not shut the door. Oh, oh. no, Bunn hits Malcolm and this could be bad because he's going to come right into the middle of the track. The track is going to be blocked, is it? Surely, yeah. Oh, no, it's not. It's not blocked. The drivers can just about. Well, there's more as an aftermath as well. Oh, dear. And uh, Dennis Elcher is involved. Vidovic got pushed and slowed down. Um, I think Katz as well, I'm not really sure. But yeah, there's an awful lot going on out there right now. That was a real mess. I'm surprised actually that was not a um, was not a slowdown. Uh, uh, safety, safety car. car. Yeah. I think it was mainly because most people managed to get through it. Um, but yeah, I, I really feared that that was going to be an almighty blockage of the track. And in the end, it, it was okay. Um, after all that, then, uh, Matt Bunn looks like he's out as well. Who's at the front? I can't even tell. Pete Harrod. Pete Harrod is up front. There we go. Ackerson back in a podium position. Cheppy's there. Kraft doing a little bit better this race in fourth. Richard Gore in fifth. He's got Sutton tucked up behind him. Good to see Sutton. Back up there, Baxter doing well again for Fnatic in seventh. Mark Woodhouse eighth, Glatzo, and then Jamie Ayres. So, yeah, Svidovic dropped down to 15th. He, like I say, he got slowed down through sort of turn three, I think it was, and looks like some side by side just ahead. That's Woodhouse and Glatzo. Yeah, thanks for that, mate. I was really struggling to look through the list and find anyone who was still there because most of the front runners didn't think it was that, that ended up getting involved in those accidents. Um, as he said, Ashley Sutton is in the mix alongside number 10 Richard Gore and he's got uh, Stephen Baxter for company as well. Baxter trying to have a go on the BTCD race winner and a man who's won many many times in this very championship battle up front between Harrod and Hackerson for the lead. Both go over the curbs and Hackerson he got away with that slow down he just about has but Stelian is the man who's got the, got the main advantage from that not going to have a go into Villeneuve on Harrod though and where's Adam Bath after the first lap 12 positions gained for him and he's between uh, Laidler and Ricardo Castellino it looks like oh no Bath hits Laidler let's have a look at this mid, this, this mid pack area lots of positions being changed at the moment around sort of Smolensky in 15th that's all there, Tregertha, 18th. Look then, up oh, here's some crashing. Tregertha looks like he's hit something at some point as well. 
quite sure exactly who or what that was. Oh, Roy Viverkey's round. Yeah, what happened to Roy? Get a little replay of that. Second place in race one. Takes two, sorry. Well, Roy to get a bit of help. Oh, he just doesn't see the Manatech car. Is that Thompson again? Is that just the same thing that the same thing that happened to the Vivek in the in the um, in the race? Have a look. Who who was it? Sorry, who hit him? It was a Fanatec car. I couldn't tell. No, it wasn't Thompson. It was Baxter. I think was it? And that wasn't Baxter. Who was it? It was definitely a Fanatec car, but. That's all. Oh, was it? I didn't could see the mirrors. Been. No, could have been. Oh, look at this now. No, it's not. I can't tell. I'm afraid either. Look at this now. Um, Thompson was out of the race, so I apologise to Josh. Uh, Hackerson third, and then it's Dan Kraft trying to go around the outside. And Villeneuve, Hackerson tries to push him a bit wide. Sutton's going through the middle. It's his teammate, that's cheeky. Dan Craft is not going to be happy with that one. Button going through and stopping that move on Hackerson. Yeah, Baxter and Gore just waiting to see what's going to happen here. Something I think they feel. Looks like Adam Barth is out of this one as well. Oh! No! How's that happened? Well, that was over and done pretty quickly. Oh dear. Go on then, take us through it. Well, um. If I was racing full time, then I would put in a protest for whoever it was that absolutely KO'd me into the first corner. Ah, right. Alex, do we have a culprit? Mr. Rizzo. Ah. I won't bring it up on replay, especially if you're not going to protest it. There <laughs> <laughs> go, then. So, well, you can join us for the rest of this race, then, Pete Harrod is in second place behind Stelian Czechalewski now and third is Ben Hackerson for Daniel Kraft is Ashley Sutton Hackerson did well didn't he that lap to hold off the um, onslaught from them this is a good race actually for the uh, CQRS line I can see three of them in that top ten Baker in eighth place now uh, I take it there's no Diogo Melro tonight either so uh, no. we'll do pretty well without him Sutton. I wonder if that's why um, Bum was running their, their livery, but I don't think you can do changes like that for one no, race, can you? I think, you're so allowed, I think it's going to be a permanent change. Yeah, exactly. But maybe it is. Not sure. Um, McIntyre and Glatzel, they're side by side. Look at that little group, actually. Very, very um, closely fought. They're 4.6 seconds behind Svidovic ahead up the road, so they really are fighting amongst themselves. Oh, Atkinson. Oh. Enough and uh, yeah, can drop to the back of that pack. Is that who turns up? Is it? I've got a feeling it's Girth though, is it? No, oh no, it, it was um, actually McIntyre that gave a little, little shove to Atkinson. He just went lost control. We haven't seen Black or much this race meeting, but he's trying to hold off um, last season's um, championship winner. Beedwich having a little look up the inside. Well, he was right at the front, wasn't he, at the start of this race? But um, so he had that slow down. That's a Baxter. So back side by side. Oh, yeah. oh has Baxter gone off? Yeah, Baxter's <laughs> off. Baxter was wide. He'll get a nice little slow down for that. Oh, a nice cheeky quarter panel by um, by uh, number ten, Richard Gore. <laughs> Dear, they were battling over sixth and seventh places. Baxter but, uh, came off worse that time. The fair Baxter did move across. I think going into the braking zone. But yeah, what's it? What's it like in terms of the? tyres out there then, is it pretty bad though? It's definitely harder to get the cars into the corners um, than it was in race race two, but yeah, uh, I was keeping a good handle on things, but yeah, here they go, onto the front straight to start lap uh, lap five of the race. The Harrow's got Hackerson right with him again, and Hackerson who who said that that was his first podium in, in race one earlier, looks like he's trying to get another one here, and he's there we go, for into second place pit past Pete Harrod. Yeah, first time in the top three in a race one. Well, ben Hackerson, of course, has been to the top step before. Now he's going to look for that again as he goes up in second position. 
And it's a very, very strong meeting for him so far. No George Simmons tonight for Boosted Motorsport. We've had a pretty good, um, pretty good start to this season. Ash Sutton's moved up as well. Started in 18th. He's now up to B3. Ash had a little look on Hackerson there. I think coming just a little bit too far back, but gets a great oh, run out of I the corner. He's going to try and go around the outside. I think that'll be a slowdown, Alex. He was that slow out of the corner. Really? But it looked like he was because Sutton just took no effort to get past him at all. Mm. Yeah, like you say, straight through. Didn't even have to outbreak him. Well, Ash will be happy with that. Then uh, Pete Harrod in behind Hackerson. And then it's Kraft in fifth. Where's Paul Smith in this one? He's in the pits. Oh, he's out, is he? Yeah, so we both uh, haven't had a good race. But Pete Harris now got... Um, got Dan Craft. Dan Craft, yeah. So the CQRS line cars keep on coming. Because he won't do too much to upset his parent team. Craft is through into fourth, back, into fourth position. Back where he started, in fact. Yeah, it's good to see Craft at the front again. He's, he, he was my head a bit further down, wasn't he, in races one and two. The question is, uh, for Paul Smith's sake, has he been put more than two laps down now? Uh, he is still in the pit, so yeah, he's been demoted to two laps down, so he won't be able to get re reverse grid pole. Neither will I. Neither will you, no. Oh dear. But you will be starting, it looks like, a fraction higher than you did in this race. That's a small comfort, I think. Uh, Mark Woodhouse and Wojciech Svidovic into Tamburello. And Svidovic has made a, oh, he's made a good move. Going to get through. Yeah, beautiful put that that was. That was brilliant from uh, Sudovic, Alex. It just took that extra speed in, didn't he? Carried it out, much wider line. Woodhouse um, knew that he had to leave a bit of room on the outside. Yeah, he's driven well in this meeting, is Woodhouse, though. And he's... Um... Yeah, still sitting inside the top ten right now. I mean, uh, Blackpool just a bit quicker the last lap, but a little bit of a gap behind to Baxter, so... Only three laps to go. Could hold on to a top ten here. Still only seven seconds separates the top ten. And another seven seconds between the next uh, 12 drivers. Ackerson just dropped a little bit off of Sutton here now. One, one second. Look at this for um, 27th on back. Kiba, Stevens, Bond... Bodice, Cunniff, Melcher, Blake, Whitehead. Oh, yeah. The two Prosim cars in there as well. Laura Bond and Kip Stevens, both teammates. And it looks like they're all closing in on the damaged car of Lorne Murray, who started. Oh, good. <laughs> yeah. of them. Lorne Although Murray. somehow he's got in front of them, despite that damage. So. Murray resembling my car before he met his, um, his end. So, uh, yeah, crabbing all over, all over Italy here. Yeah, not the, um, not the best at the minute, aerodynamically, that's for sure. And the and the some good, um, really good battling going on here, though. Number 61 is Colin Cunning. He's trying to make a move on Kip Stevens now. Might have a going to Rivazza here, Alex, because he's close. Yeah, Pope showed his nose, but not really committed on the break, was he, to get alongside. No, it's one of those where you can, but I think you've, just, you've got to be confident in trying to do that. Some airs side by side. They've got Castrolido with them as well, going into turn one. That looks very, very tasty. Where's that? 17th place, isn't it? And yeah, Cat's going through. Oh, off goes Atkinson through the gravel. No Rasmussen, of course, this uh, this race meeting. Here comes Castrolido now going through. Number eight. Oh, maybe not. Yeah, he's yeah, giving as good as he's got to the man with his about 9,000 high rating. Oh, here comes the boosted car. That is John Roberts. John with Roberts the with the green, the mostly green boosted car. They're trying to Piratella here. That's the inside line, but that doesn't always work. Not on this corner. Oh, Robertson. oh, it is. Loses control of the car. Somehow we'll just get it into Piratella ahead of Roberts. I'm sure he's going to emerge that advantage. I think he's got a slow down as well, possibly. Drop behind Roberts, the king of the ring, of course, in 23 touring cars. 
Delian Cevalewski leads Ashley Sutton by 1.3 seconds with two with um, just one and a half laps to go one and a bit laps to go um, of course Adam uh, I don't think we can see any overtaking there between the front front two but I think David Baker might be able to have a go into Tamburello it's been much improved as an overtaking spot since they got rid of the very anti-Bassa yeah you never know with Chepelevsky and Sutton, the gap was 1.3 at the start of lap 7, lap 8 it's now 8 tenths of a second so a uh, good lap there by Ash Sutton but is it going to be enough for him to get close to saying Chepelevsky on this final lap of the race but yeah Baker doing a very good job he's got 14 positions, almost as many as Ash Sutton, in fact the biggest mover I think is Ricardo Castroleda with 23 positions I think you are I think you're right on that one that oh. is, um, oh 24 places Stuart McFadden, oh you are 51st uh, on the half grid a second. to 27. Half a second now between Chappie and Sutton. Chappie must have, did Chappie make a mistake somewhere, Alex? So is Sutton just, just a lot quicker at the stage of the race? Yeah, I don't know. Just seemed to have closed in a lot, didn't he, this particular lap, so... I Stellion got a slow down somewhere. Sutton's right with him. Clocks. Yeah, it could be that. Oh, it, looks, it looks like it, actually, looking at the way that... Stellian's car just didn't give him any purchase through the middle of Piratella into Aqua Minerale then. Rex will be, of course, egging on. Benny Chapelevsky to get a win here whilst Ash Sutton in principle at the, AP the CQRS line team. About two tenths of a second as we go into the Variante Alta for the final time here. See if Sutton can get anything done. Oh, good, good chicane for um, Jeppy, half a second. Well, the apex test of his very Gertha good just for got the very anti the final lap. Oh, Trigertha. people today. Who's that Trigertha? Oh, yeah. Dear. Well, he's out then. And uh, but Stelian Chapelevsky, well and truly in. Can he beat Sutton to the line? It's going to be fairly close, but I think he's going to do it here. So, round three of the evening. And round 30. Eight of the RSing MSA British Sim Races Touring Car Championship goes to Stelian Chepelevsky. Very job, close yeah. between Baker and Gore. Yeah, very close indeed. And the Skaggles coming across now. Starting to see it. It's close between McIntyre and McFarlane. They've been glued together for two races now. I want to see this from 20. Uh, like the, the battle like, a bit further down. 28th, 29th, 30th. Very close. That's Bodice, Bond and... Uh, Boggy, is it? No. Funny. Funny. That, that whole thing split apart quite a lot, didn't it, at the end? Yeah, Stevens still coming across Melchett and Kiever and Stevens and... Uh, Ferguson also there with Stevens. That's a drag race. That's Stevens coming out on top. Oh, who's that with a lot of damage? Matt, Matt Kiever with awful damage. And for Michael Hall to now come across the line. That's fault crabbing for Matthew Keeper. No one if it's 35th. Dear me. <laughs> well, to get it across the line there. Looking like that. 100%. Right. You can okay. See that, you can see that once once the opening, few, once the second half of the race got into play, we had relatively clean racing, but everyone that was out of the race, um, they're facing the first half. They were out in the first um, four laps. Yeah, that's right, Adam. If you could do me a favour, and that's my voice is starting to to uh, suffer a little bit. If you could take us through the finishing order, please. Okay, so Stelian Chapelevsky takes the win. Second for Ash Sutton. Third for Ben Hackerson. Two podiums in a night. That's very good for him. Dan Craft in fourth. Started fourth, finished fourth. Then uh, Pete Harrod in fifth. Sixth, Richard Gord denying David Baker a sixth position in seventh. Uh, Wojciech Svidovich eighth. Ninth, Jake Blackhall. Tenth, Mark Woodhouse. Eleven for Stephen Baxter. Twelfth, Sven Glatzel. Thirteenth for Jack McIntyre with Ross McFarlane in fourteenth. Fifteenth for Alex Malensky. Andreas Katz in sixteenth. Seventeenth for uh, Ricardo Castroledo. Then uh, John Roberts in 18th for Jamie Ayres, 19th for Nicole Foggy, rounding out the top 20. 21st, Adam Hadfield. 22nd, Rusty Laidler. That's whereabouts I was running before the um, before it all kicked off. Uh, Lord Murray, 21st. Stuart Atkinson, 24th. Max Wright, 25th. Then Stuart, Ak Stuart McFadden in 26th. 27th, Laura Bond. 28th, Tristan Bodice. 29th, Colin Cuniff. And then 30th, Michael Blake. 31st, Dennis Melcher. It's with Kip Stevens, 32nd. Forstan Helgerson in 33rd. 34th, Andrew Whitehead. 35th, Matthew Kieber. Simon Rosen, 36th, 37th, the pole sitter, Scott Malcolm. And then one lap down, Will Trigurfa, how he is disqualified. So uh, Scott Malcolm will be the car eligible for the reverse grid if we get a full. Michael Hall, four laps down, along with Paul Smith. Uh, Nathan Davis, also five laps down, along with Roy Verke and Rob Graham. 
Then it's me, six laps down. Uh, then it's uh, Maciek Sakovic, who started on the second row. Alex Everett, also seven laps down, along with Dave Christie, who seems to have no luck at all in this series. Gav Fickling, Matt Bunn, who um, definitely loves the catering in the pit garage because he spent the most of the evening there. <laughs> and uh, Josh Thompson, not a good night of you, Josh, really. You get a win in the race, two of the Porsches, but then you're back, at, back in last position, 51st. This is true. Matt Bunn has, has rushed off to the buffet far too quickly tonight. Uh, don't get me wrong, Adam, we do love working with you and we do love having you in the commentary box, but um, we didn't want you to be in here tonight. So um, hopefully, uh, yeah. with, with respect, this is the last time you're in here calling the race with us. I hope so. I really hope so. I, uh, one finish and then two disqualifications. Dear me. Right. One, Reverse both of them, actually, not your fault. Alex, if you can, uh, you can't unfortunately do Adam a favour on this one. You can't fix the wheel. No, not at all. So let me just give it a big old spin and uh, we'll see where we end up. Hey, well, what happened at the Tamburello chicane? I had to get, I literally stopped the car. There was so much kicking off there. Oh. I was going to ask you about that. Okay, so it ends up 38th. It is, didn't quite tick over to 30th, almost a, another small one, but 38 is. Well, it is Wilshire Gear for how he's disqualified, so it's um, Scott Malcolm that's going to be on the pole. Back at the pole, back on pole. He was on pole for race three, now he's going to be on pole for race four. Then it's Simon Rose in second, Matthew Kieber sliding his way to third, and then Andrew Whitehead fourth for Forstein Helgerson in fifth. All right then, well, we look forward to... Um... What's, what race four is going to bring us very, very shortly here at Imola. And we'll be back when the iRacing MSA British Sim Racers Touring Car Championship continues.
Simulated racing can be awesome, but can also be kind of a free-for-all. Interestingly, auto racing faced the same problem in its earlier days. Whether it was on the back roads, the beaches, or the city streets, the racing was fun. But there was always a certain level of chaos and danger, until some folks came along and put some order to all of this. Stuff like official racetracks, regulations about weight and equipment, and enforcement of standards. That's what gave us high-speed excitement, fast-paced action, and photo finishes. That's when racing became racing. The guys over at iRacing.com have made the same transformation in the world of sim racing. Sure, they've got the most accurate tracks and realistic cars out there, but that's just the start. See, iRacing analyzes the performance and results of each driver in every race. So you can be sure you're always placed in races where the competition will be tight. And that those reckless drivers who ruin it for us all are kept in the pits. Not to mention that with over 45,000 active members already in their vast community, you can find races day and night. So you can always get in on the action. You can even join a league of your favorite series. And since updates are always automatic, you don't have to worry about software and can focus on the track. Zip up your fire suit and check out iRacing.com. iRacing.com is a sim racing game that combines a true-to-life racing experience with an online community of virtual racers from all over the globe. iRacing offers a multitude of officially licensed cars and tracks, laser scanned with millimeter accuracy. Their car models and mechanical systems are based on real-world physics and engineered in cooperation with manufacturers and race teams iRacing's web-based interface allows members to compare stats and test drive any combination of car and track instantly. Their skill license system ranges from rookie to pro, ensuring members are always pitted against those with similar skill sets. Members are able to sign up for a weekly race series, compete in time trials, host a private race with friends, and participate in racing leagues created and run by the community. With over 60,000 members, iRacing works in partnership with renowned motorsport organizations like SRO Motorsports Group to deliver virtual races based on the real-life Blancpain GT Series. iRacing's Blancpain Endurance Series features team racing, giving members the ability to build a team and participate in races ranging from 3 hours to 24 hours. Additional partners include NASCAR, IMSA, V8 Supercars, IndyCar, allowing members to race in their very own 24 hours of Spa, Bathurst 1000, Daytona 500, and many more. iRacing.com, delivering the most authentic racing experience short of getting into a real race car.
It's the final race of the evening in the BSRTC from Miller, Andrew Woodhouse and Alex Simpson bringing you all the live action here on Apex Racing TV and iRacing Live. Alex, it's the final round night and um, I think it's been a really, really fun and enjoyable meeting. That has been a great meeting all round. Everything, the Kia action has been fantastic. The Porsche races were great. And we've got one more race left. And yeah, I'm looking forward to see how this one plays out. Reasonable reverse grid this time. Um, the weather obviously a little bit more reduced, like stark contrast really compared to what we had in the last race. So um, yeah, keeping the guys um, busy out there with um, changeable conditions. Thought we'd get a good one here. Oh, we will. And we're on Adam Bath will be starting near the back and he's going to have a job on to get through the field. But I think, um, I don't know, we've set him a target of the uh, top 20. So we'll see if he can... Uh, if you can do that, it's going to be very, very tough, though, I must admit. Um, qualifying is nearly over, and we'll be able to bring you the full grid just about now. Just a little word on the uh, conditions out there. Again, it's overcast once more, 18 degrees Celsius is the air temperature, and 18 degrees is the track temperature. It's eight-lap race around this 4.91-kilometre circuit. Of course, um, I think we have this discussion, Alex, pretty much every year. But um, it would be good to see this track back on the um, back on the F1 calendar again. Oh yeah, I agree. Yeah, I agree. It would be. I don't think um, we get any overtaking, mind you. But <laughs> circuit for the drivers. Will Tregertha goes on to pole position. For round four, ahead of Scott Malcolm, Simon Roden third, Matthew Kieber fourth, Andrew White heading fifth, Thorstein Helgerson is sixth, Kip Stevens in seventh, Dennis Melcher eighth, Michael Blake ninth, and Colin Cunniff. In 10th, just looking down the order at our winner from last time, which was here. I'm just drawing a complete blank there, viewers, to apologise. Who won the last race, Alex? I've completely forgotten. Stellion. Oh, it was Stellion Cheflowski. I thought it was. Um, yeah, Stellion Cheflowski starting in 38th place, so I'm sure... He's going to have it on as well. Try and get to the front. We'll find I'll out how he does when this gets underway very shortly. Oh, I missed who was on pole again. <laughs> uh, Rigertha, sorry. Here we go. Red lights are on here at Imola for the final time tonight. Green, green, green. Green light is on. Rigertha looked like he was asleep at the start. And, uh, Malcolm draws alongside him in the first corner. I really do hope everybody gets through this okay. Looks like it's a bit of contact in the middle, but I think largely, largely everyone is through. In fact, there is a problem for, like a problem for Stelian Cepelevski. I wonder if he's got a slowdown. Adam Bass blown past him. Cats as well. Some problems for Cats. He's either not taken to the start or oh, some issue. Alfala Tech car in the gravel. And that is... I don't know who that is, but Castellito's been off the circuit as well. Oh, and Laura Bond's off. So the two Pro Sim cars off. And I think the Alfala Tech car that was around, Michael Blake, he was in the gravel. Oh, there's a crash. I hear it at least. Yeah, can't see it. Matt Bunn, I think it is. Oh. Yeah, Bunn's around, so issues with Bunn. Again? Someone else, I think that's oh, Castellito as well. Adam Bath is in the wall. Probably with... Early. It's going again, so that's good. Not really any damage. Oh. Slow down. Oh, crash at the... Uh, the very anti alter there's a few crashes there. There's a couple of the CQR cars getting into each other. I think it might have been... So, uh, yeah, I can't find anyone on this list at all. Oh, some um, penultimate corner as well, Baxter around. And there's, and there's an Apex oh. car miles off. It was that miles off into the gravel. Davis. Davis, oh no. A bit of a shocker at this meeting, hasn't he? Just really not had any luck whatsoever. Awful, and even when he was at the front, trouble to be had. 
Into the pits comes uh, Davis now. Girth 1.3 seconds clear on Malcolm. So be happy with that. Who's also 1.7 clear of um, Kiba. So I'm just keeping a bit of an eye on the midfield as well because we've got um, great action here between uh, Ross McFarlane and uh, Sven Glatzel and Jack McIntyre and also Foggy or oh, Foggy I think there's a slowdown oh, of who was that? I think that was Hall taking a bit of a whack that? Alex Everett that's uh, 28th 29th place I think I saw all that yeah Dutra Gertha then Continues to lead. Got Malcolm in P2. Oh, the slow was that a slowdown for Matthew Kieber? Punish just driven all the way around him. Like he wasn't even there. Could have been. Yeah, that, these guys are, are all spread out in front. Oh, Tristan Bodice, I think, got a nudge off Kip Stevens there in through the chicane. Pass flying everywhere over the curbs in the, uh, in the very anti alter. Daniel Kraft is looking feisty through there as well. I think that might have been Josh Thompson in the um, Anatec car, who's just behind Richard Gore and Stelian Cepilevsky. So, a little gaggle here. Quite a lot of places to look in, really, is it, the mate? When it's like this, it's just very, very difficult. Problem for Pete Howard, he's um, out as well. Problem for Kraft. Slow down for Kraft. Big slowdown, massive one. Hall and Hel uh, ha oh dear, can't speak. Hall and Hackerson side by side over the line. Two Club 73 Touring Car Champions from season one. Hall won the Jetta and Hackerson won the Kia. Oh. Bit of contact between them as well. A little bit. Oh wow, it's close. It's great racing though. And these two fantastic stuff, very, very clean indeed. All gets the better of that one. I think Jackson knew he was in trouble there on the outside. They just looked to make a move stick there. And he's under pressure from Rizzo. Rizzo flies around the outside. Of I think he's got to slow down or something. Got to be the way he's going. Very, very slow there. Everybody's just steaming up on him at the minute. Good driving from Rizzo regardless to try and get, back and get around the outside. They've been there. Ball side by side. They've got Rob Graham there as well, just ahead of them. Yes, Rob Graham, 31st, yep. A quick look at Baker as well. He's right in the middle of um, all the action with McIntyre ahead of him, McFarland, or Murray, Glatzel, Ayres, Smolinski. Oh, the list just goes on all the way to the front. Wow, what a battle. And speaking of which, we've got one here between um, Andrew Whitehead and number 52, that's Adam Hadfield. That was in the Fantec car when we'd forgotten who that was earlier on. There you go. And then behind them, Smolensky's out of control. Trying to get past um, Rusty Laidler. Laidler manages to stay in front. Got to say congratulations to Rusty. He took his first ever... Um, I don't know if it's his first ever win in cars, but he did take his, uh, his uh, golf. Uh, he does race a VW golf, and he did win last week. So well done to him. Yeah, congrats on that. You'll have to forgive me for not knowing necessarily the series or which track he was at, but fantastic stuff anyway. Oh. As there was a question asked on the chat, a commentating colleague in 35th, just tucked up behind Richard Gore at the moment. He has gained no in position, even though we did see him going off the course earlier on, so been too bad for Adam but you can tell the thing is mate so frustrating back there really really is I've been in these races maybe not as big a grids as this but when you're sort of down in 30th or 27th or whatever it's like you and, and you're trying to move forward and such fast drivers in front of you you just think you just don't get a break you know yeah. like sometimes in, in certain series we've all been in where there's some, there's some drivers at the back who maybe aren't as good or aren't as in this series you don't get that you don't get that like all these drivers in front Richard Gore Oh, somebody's over. That's um, John Roberts, I think, is on his roof. How on earth did that happen? Yeah, it was John Roberts. And Colin Cunniff very close to Scott Malcolm here. Just, um, I'll be back with you in a second. Ah, Roberts then 
Um, yeah, Roberts didn't roll onto his roof. It was sort of the way the physics just took him once he once he'd stopped the car. It just kind of rolled him over. It was a bit weird, but took on his roof nevertheless. Surely this has got to be um, Cunniff's best opportunity. This is closest he's ever been on um, Malcolm. Touch up in the slipstream. It's closing in. Hello, Scott. He's late on the brakes, Alex. Oh, yes. Oh, was there a bit oh, of contact there? There was. Difficult Malcolm's going to lose the place to Kiba as well. Possibly his teammate. Good look at that back. Cunniff goes in deep. Uh, just kind of met in the middle, didn't they? I don't yeah. think there's anything really dodgy about that one. Just that one, you know? Yeah. Having a look at this right. battle oh. between Roden, Ayres and Smolensky. There's nothing yeah, between a, them at the moment. That's a great battle. I've seen that one on screen. Now, here's me. Um, Smolensky's raced well. He's in 10 position. Oh, look at that. Look at how the hairpin is. McFarlane, <laughs> Roden, Glatzel, Sutton, Baker, Laidlow, Savinovich, McIntyre, Everett, Blackall, Murray, Paul, Woodhouse, Chiplowski, Hackson, Rizzo, Ray and Bath. Thompson, Kraft, Gore, they're all in a line. Uh, it looks like uh, Roden possibly with some issues. On so the this inside, is, what's by the way, to him? Though, by the way, mate, that's 11th place down to 39th. It's just um, 10 seconds. Yeah, crazy. Now that's we'll look at this replay, see what happens to Roden. In a strong position, but after this he's in 35th, so... Oh, the traffic oh, just the chicane. Oh. Unfortunately, one of the CQR guys hits him. Not sure who it was. Poor old Adam Bath's been dropped right to the back of this group as well. And caught by Daniel Kraft. And Boston oh. um, Helgerson and Max Wright side by side on the main street. A bit exciting going into turn one. Here we go then into Tamburello. Oh, Helgerson's really late on the brakes. I think it's too late. Yeah. Yes, it is. Oh dear. A bit deep there. Uh, but you know what? He, he had nothing really to lose because he had four seconds to Andrew Whitehead. Uh, Whitehead, though, has a lot to lose. He's got a hell of a lot of cars behind him. Ackerson and Woodhouse are side by side as well. This is a great little battle. That's 27th and 28th. Somewhere mired in the middle of this isn't it? This marauding pack of Kier Optimus. 52, Adam Hadfield trying around the outside of Andrew Whitehead. Whitehead can not be taken that easily, I don't think. Still got the inside for Piratella. And the hill curves right, and then we've got this left-hander down the hill. Ah, good work by Whitehead. That was very good to keep his position. Excellent driving. Smolensky and... Oh. Oh, now Glatzel. Glatzel's going to try and Smolenski into the second part of Aquaman Rally. Side by side, they're slowing each other up. Jamie Ayres is looking to go through as well. Tough racing out here, Alex, at this point. Final race meeting. Race of the night. Always is. Guys are giving it everything. Yeah, they really are. McFarlane side by side with uh, Laidler. 8.7 seconds, Tregertha leads now, absolutely flying out there. Look at this as well, who's that? That's McIntyre trying to get involved in this as well. Oh, heavy braking. Oh, they all come together, oh, oh, three wide. Oh, so no. narrow there as well. Oh, they still can't get out of each other's way. Oh, and again, McIntyre's on the grass. It's going to all end in a heap. Oh, three wide. Oh, dear, be careful. Black ball on the outside. Yep, he's making it four wide. Oh, he's, I hope he doesn't. <laughs> he <laughs> did for a minute and then he backed out of it. But Here we go. He's nosing for a minute. Into Tamburello. Are they going to be able to sell? Oh, no. Jamie Ayres just, just drifted across the front of uh, number 20. I think it was Ross McFarlane. Oh, uh, no, it wasn't McFarlane, sorry. Oh, so, no, yep, you're right. It was McFarlane. It was Ayres, wasn't it, who, who was out. Um, back Ayres just kind Baker of drifted. and... Um, <laughs> Uh, Svidovic having a good little battle as well. Svidovic with a fair bit of damage. Baker's car looks in um, pristine condition. 
could be a title battle at the end of it all, Alex. Definitely potential for it. Malensky and Glatzel going at it. Oh, contact. Malensky pushes Glatzel a little bit wide. Oh, the contact again. Fantastic race. I want this race to keep going. We've got a lap and a bit to go. Crazy. Absolutely loving this. Where's Adam? Oh, no, he's had a problem. He's had a real problem. He's down in 39th place. The old seconds behind. Must have been a, an issue for him. I think he might have to park this. It's absolutely terrible. Oh, awful. I can see that on the screen. Stephen's got a good run on Scott Malcolm here as well. Pro Sim, the Alf um, Automec, sorry. Automec, yep. Yeah. And uh, Stephen's looking to get to the top six. Malcolm's got damage. Oh, Stephen's having a look left, right, and centre, but we'll be able to get through there. Malcolm sort of put his car in quite a strategic place there, didn't he? Sort of in the middle. Quite good Very difficult middle, to get around. A oh, Whitehead had uh, Glatzel. Smolensky, Hadfield and Co. Oh, Whitehead goes wide at Tamburello is Smolensky's chance. To try and go around the outside of the boosting car. And it's Hadfield. Wojciech Svinovic is in there. David Baker as well. Oh, Svinovic gets turned a little. And then he hits Hadfield. And now it's McIntyre getting involved as well. And... Uh, one is Everett. God. A big lot of cars. Six cars in a line. Oh, Hadfield cuts inside in the line. Sudovic is fighting back. It's still on between. Well, I thought he was still on between Cuniff and McFadden. It's not been a great lap for Cuniff. But into Rivazza then for the final time. Not been his night so far. Pole position helped him out, and he's driven a fantastic race, an immaculate race. He's leading the British GT4 Championship at the, at the moment, and he's P1 again here in the British Sim Races Touring Car Championship. Will Tregertha takes race four and that reverse grid pole, making it a fantastic race for him. Good race from. Um Baden Conniff, Uber coming across as well for fourth. Look at all these guys scrapping away. Whitehead and uh, Baker, that's going to be close. Oh, very close up to the line. Where is the line? The first is the first line, isn't it? All right. Uh, no, no, it's the second one. Not the one at the very end, though, is it? Uh, oh, no, you're right, sorry, you right. it's, it's the one in the middle, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Adam Bath retired the car. He retired the car, he was disqualified. Um, I think we lost Josh Thompson, Dave Christie on the final lap, Alex. And Andreas Katz is going to finish 37th after all that damage is sustained on the first lap. Yeah, he pitted, got the car repaired and got back out there. It was worthwhile. I think, yeah, every um, finish is... Crucial. Yeah, we're well, having a look where his teammates were. It definitely, um, no, no. To be fair, um, to, there's there's three guys higher than him, so it was, you know, he could have retired it, but he got points for himself, though, didn't he? Yeah. Well, I think you know, Katz is obviously quite a way down in the championship, but I do think he's got an opportunity by the end of the season to get back into the top, you know, into the top ten. Of course, he does easily. We've got. Um, We've got plenty of the season still to go. I think he's he's well, he's well within the, the rights. He's, we've got over a hundred races to go if you go by the calendar. So, yep. I think that could be um, very very beneficial for Andreas Katz in the, in the long run. Will Tregertha though, Alex, absolutely fantastic out there. I know he I know he had got the reverse grid pole. But he didn't make a particularly good start, and some people would have got worried by that, but he didn't. No, exactly. Good start. Um, or do you know? I mean, good enough. Um, to be able to hold on to it, um, yeah, and then he just didn't look back, did he? So and the rest were, and the rest were fighting amongst themselves. Um, 
someone else who's fighting amongst the pack was um, Adam Bath. And uh, Adam, I didn't see what happened to you on the screen. Did we Did we catch that, Alex? Uh, no, nope, sorry. So uh, take us through it, mate, and tell us how you met your demise in that one. Uh, the demise came after what was a really good race. Yeah, even though it was like for 30, 30 or on back. Um, I did have a chance of getting inside the top 20, but uh, yeah, there was a bit of a bottleneck going into uh, that pesky corner of Atza again. Um, oh, it looked like you were having a lot of fun out there, though. Yeah, it was. Uh, yeah, I was having a great time, really. Um, yeah, Richard Gore was in the mix there, and I think it's Josh Thompson as well. Me and him having a good scrap at the time, and uh, yeah, I flew into the back of Max Wright, and I got hit up the backside by... Um, uh, by someone, I'll have a quick look. Actually, I know. Uh, I know you have. I know you have raced with a lot of these guys before. But is it a bit? Um, it is a tiny bit surreal, isn't it, when you're racing with a lot of the guys who you've just been commentating on for the past two years? Yeah, 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 yeah. Just looking, <laughs> just looking back at it now. You know who the culprit was on that occasion? Uh, it was that was probably me. Um, but, what, well, what, so you... but what I will say, learning from the, from these four races that I've had today, is that um, no one should take racing in the BSRTC. Um, for granted, uh, yeah, really oh, tough. Really tough. Fantastic. Have, one thing that did make me chuckle though was the opening lap of the race, going into Ravazza and seeing about half a dozen cars had all skidded off on cold tyres. Um, yeah, that that was making me laugh for quite a few laps after that. But well, yeah, I mean, it, it's. It, I'll tell you what, the chaos of this championship, we know it's we know exactly what it's like. And um, one man who um, rose above all the chaos was Will Tregertha, and uh, Alex is with him now. Yeah, hi Will, congratulations. Welcome to the booth. Thanks. Uh, um, yeah, quite happy. Good to uh yeah, good to see you out the front. You're having a great season in real life and uh yeah, got some good results today as well. And uh yeah, that last one the best of the bunch. Yeah, things are going pretty well, apart from those two last races. Um but yeah, that race was really good fun. Um off the line. Got a little bit of wheel spin, so I thought, well, do you know what? I'll just boot it anyway and see what happens. Leave some nice elevens on the on the track, so I got a little bit of a slow start, but it didn't really matter. I had cold tyres, so the car was sliding about a lot. I was running really low wing, so the car was nice and fast in a straight line. Yeah, and of course, um, the cold temperatures out there, what was it, about a lap and a half? It looked like the guys were really struggling for, and what, after that, temperatures and pressures were good, and um, you could sort of push on. Well, yeah, I did a bit of sliding in the first, like, three corners to try and get it in. And try and get the rear tyres in, and then you can push after that. Uh, what is it? That that hairpin, and you've got the left, and then the right. That corner was very, very scary because that's kind of the first time the right-hand tyres are properly loaded up in a fast corner. So I had a bit of a wobble there, uh, which was kind of a bit of a scary moment. But yeah, it was great. I could just kind of drive off and uh, not really deal with everyone crashing into each other behind me, as it seemed. A little while since Alpha Alatex seen the uh, top step of the podium as well. Good to, um, yeah, bet those lads are happy. Yeah, hi. Uh, yeah, that's good. The, the, uh, well, Michael Blake said he'd give me a diecast car of my GT4 car, so I hope he comes up with that. <laughs> <laughs> nice. So, yeah, but I've really enjoyed it. I don't really do many of these, and I haven't raced BSRTC out of Monza. That's the only track I've raced it at, so doing it at different tracks kind of, uh, in yeah, the experience. Italy, though. We'll say you've not left Italy. <laughs> oh, well, yeah, I mean, I've got Italian touring cars in my heart. <laughs> I'm joking, uh, but... Um, <laughs> yeah. If anybody's listening yeah. out there, what are you saying? It's after a drive for next year, aren't you? Uh, in... Superstars. <laughs> oh, well, anything. Please give me free drives. <laughs> I'm joking. Um, but yeah, real life and sim racing stuff's going well. So, yeah, I'm happy at the minute. It's all, it's all good. Oh, well, obviously we've got one week break, but will you be back uh, for the following round? Oh, um, I think so. Yeah, I'd like. Well, I'd like to do it, so I'll definitely have a look at doing it. Uh, it's just whether I'm not at college or anything like that, I'm not racing away. So, but yeah, I can't remember what the next track is, but I, I really like in, like racing this, so uh, I'm definitely looking to do more of it. Cool. All right, mate. Well, thanks very much. Um, we will um, leave you to it. And, um, yeah, we'll catch you next time. Cool. Thanks. Before we bring anyone else in, what we must do is go through the race results, guys, because we haven't done that yet, and we'll need that for the edit. Uh. Okay. Uh, so, race victory does go to who we've just spoken to there, Will Trigger for second, Colin Cunniff. 
uh, who we might talk to in a minute. Third, Matthew Kiba. Fourth, Tristan Bodis. Fifth, Scott Malcolm. Sixth, uh, <laughs> Stephen. Seventh, Dennis Melcher. Eighth, Max Wright. Ninth, for Stan Helgerson. And tenth, Sven Glatzel. Eleventh, for Alex Malensky. Twelfth, Andrew Whitehead. Thirteen, for David Baker. Fourteen, for Adam Hadfield. Fifteen, for Jack Sividovich. Sixteen, for Alex Everett. Uh, who I was battling with at one point, so he had a very good race to get up uh, towards the towards the uh, the top twenty. Seventeen for Rusty Laidler, eighteen for Jack McIntyre, nineteen for Jake Blackhall, and thirty for Stelian Chapelevsky, who I overtook on the opening lap of the race. So a good a good comeback drive there from Stelian. Uh, Ross McFarlane, twenty first, twenty second, Michael Hall, twenty third, Jamie Ayres, twenty fourth, Rob Graham, twenty fifth, Mark Woodhouse, twenty sixth, Zara Rizzo, twenty seventh, Stuart Atkinson, twenty eighth, Magic Sakovic, twenty ninth, Lord Murray. And 30 of Simon Roden, 31st Roy Verke, 32nd Michael Blake, 33rd Laura Bond, 34th Stuart McFadden, 35th Andreas Katz, and Josh Thompson in 36th with Dave Christie, 37th. Both of those guys one lap down. Then Ben Hackerson two laps down along with Dan Craft and, and um, uh, yours truly. However, I do finish ahead of Ash Sutton. Um, which <laughs> means you could, in theory, say that I'm better than a British touring car winner. Um, well, it's all open to interpretation. Uh, Richard Gough, 42nd, three laps down. Uh, Stephen Baxter, 43rd, three laps down, along with John Roberts, who was five laps down. Uh, Pete Harrod, seven laps down, along with Nicole Foggy. Paul Smith, ever since he came into the commentary box to talk to us, um, it's all gone downhill from there, so we can only apologise, Paul. Uh, Nathan Davis, seven laps down, and uh, Ricardo Castroledo, who... Uh, Seems to do terrible in the even rounds of the of the day. And uh, Matt Bunn, who I'm sure has eaten all the catering and is now booked his flight out of Italy for a quick break so he can get back to uh, hopefully better races uh, in two weeks' time at Montreal. You know, it's funny, Alex. It's not funny for him, but I mean, it, it's funny that Matt Bunn has had such a good pace tonight and just absolutely terrible results. Uh, yeah, sorry, muted there. Um, yeah, look at the first race, you know, fantastic pace. And then, um, yeah. Disqualified, just, was he? Yeah, yeah got disqualified and it just went downhill oh, from there, dear. really. Oh, Matt, I'm sure, he'll, I'm sure he'll bounce back. He, he seems, to, um, seems to, you know, have a few good races in him as well. Um, we're joined at the minute by Colin Cunniff in the commentary box. And um, Colin, can you hear us? Yeah, I can hear you fine. Have you back in the booth, mate. Um, second ah. place there. I mean, that's... Uh, that's very, very good indeed, and we saw you mixing it up in that in that race meeting quite a lot. It looked, it looked like a lot of fun out there, mate. It was hard work, more and fun this week. That's just not a track that I get on with well with at all, um, and it was it was just really difficult. And that race three was just it was all I was I wasn't crying. I was having to laugh just to try and get myself through it. It was just so so hard to just keep the tires going. I was just so hot. We saw you. Race, it was. Saw you in the mix of a lot of um, quite a lot of things in the middle of the pack. In uh, I think it was race two and race three that where you just looked very very tight. There's a bit of contact here, a bit of contact there, and um, yeah, when it's like that, we said you just got to get to the end and then pray for a good reverse grid, and that's kind of what you got. You got tenth on the on the grid, and then take Pretty us much, through yeah. take us through how you moved through the field in this um, this race four. Oh well, I don't know. It just opened up for me, and I was tenth in the grid in there, and it just opened up, and I was fourth by the end of uh, the half first half a lap or something like that. And then it was just a case of just try to keep my head down, but uh, I just didn't have the pace here at all. I've never had the pace here, and going back to Grand Prix two days um, in the, the great Jeff Cramond game. I've just never had the pace here whatsoever. I don't know what it is about the track, but it just doesn't get on well with me at all. But I got there in the end. Well, you did indeed. In second place, I mean, you, you cannot be... Um, you must be happy with that, considering... How, how your, did your I get troubles. second place? Because uh, Stuart Atkinson passed me. We'll, oh, have, to, I, I yeah, we'll have to look at the official results, because yeah. there is definitely some time in bug, because it says that Stuart is 55 seconds behind the leader. Did he, he, did did he fail, did he fail he disappeared. to slow down? Not really disappeared straight after they crossed the line, so I yeah. don't, don't know. I'm not what sure. He did, but yeah, something's something's not quite right, but yeah, um, why it's still showing him as third <sighs> on my screen. So well, I'm considering, really... how, considering how the evening went, I was very happy with just the podium. So yeah, uh, I was pretty much it, last every race before that. So if you've got the link to the official results, then that'll probably make more sense. But from the live timing, it's definitely gone a bit squiffy. So. <laughs> well, well, we'll count that one as a top three, I think. I've got a point there, mate. That's I'm just happy with that because oh, it was just so so much hard work. I mean, that race three, I was 
coming down in the last two corners, I was went somehow managed to get myself between two cars and I was just like, this isn't going to work if I brake then. So I just let off the brakes and just let myself go between them and went off, off wide just to avoid the incident. I could just try and keep the car going because I knew it was just going to end up in a bad one. But, oh, so it was a good laugh, but like I say, I'll be looking forward to next week or whenever whenever the next one is. All right, well... um. Well You've got done, some anyway, sponsors mate, got to thank, to end, actually, yeah. before you go. Don't forget that. Your team manager's on the chat uh, uh, trying just, to help you out here. Craig. So, uh, so uh, we've got Thrustmaster, ProRace UK, Isle of Base, Lux Liveries, and Dapper and Coo. Thanks to them for sponsoring us for th- throughout this campaign. All right. Well, well done, Colin. Um, Cheers, guys. Thanks for... Uh, oh, yeah, I should well actually say, uh, I don't know. I've not looked at the incident I had with Adam. Um, so I'd probably better say sorry to him just in case it was my fault. Um, I don't I've, know. If I've completely him forgot out. it, Colin. So uh, I've been like, trying to hold him back in I the booth just, all this time. I was just like, there was someone else I was meant to say. He was like, oh, wait yeah, till that's it. He was like, wait till that Cuniff gets in here and he's then gonna uh, have, he's going to have it out with Colin Cuniff. Oh no! Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I know that's it. No, I, 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 I see, I've, not, I've not looked at the incident back yet, so I, I, I don't know what I was alongside. But you, you did dive bomb me, so you yeah. did wipe me. <laughs> so <laughs> to, to be fair, well, here we go. Here we go. Come on. Now. To, to be fair, Colin, the well, day he, we'll I'd... just mute ourselves. Let him go for it. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, I mean, the only grudge Adam holds, I think, in his whole life is against Birmingham City. So I think you're all right. Yeah, you're uh, all right. No, it's it it all good fun. Then I just uh, <laughs> better say something about it while I remember. There you go. Well, it sounds like it was fifty-fifty to us. So uh, <laughs> we'll just give that. We'll just give me. that as uh, you both numpties, and we'll move on. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Colin. Anyway, Cheers, for joining us, mate, as usual. It's always a it's always a pleasure to Black Holes uh, in uh, Australia. To talk to Colin Cuddy. Rusty Laidler thinks he's on the other side of the world. Uh, hello, mate. Hello, mate. <laughs> so, how did you get on out there tonight? It looked like it was a bit crazy. It's um, I don't think I've had a fight that hard for uh, last position in my entire <laughs> sim racing oh, career. Me both, Rusty. Damn me. Jesus, no one wants to let up. It's frightening out there. Do you remember? I mean, obviously you do because you were in the series, and, and I was when when it probably wasn't as, as competitive. And you all remember the fact that you used to get some drivers who you think, right, I can have them, and then now there's just not really those. Not really there, is it? Yeah, I mean, we've been in the series so long. It's actually quite nice to see just how many people progress. Um, yep. You know, there's so many names that were at the very back of the pack. The likes of um, Pete Newman, his name comes to mind. I remember he used to be like. 39th, 40th, 45th. He still is now because he keeps getting in incidents, but <laughs> he's got the pace to be at the front. You're and, allowed um, to say that, you're his it, teammate. It's, oh, I'll say that about anyone. But it, it's not, I actually, even though it means I'm going back another position as people keep progressing, um, I think it's quite nice to see. Yeah, I know. I think it's fantastic. We've said to Alex in the past that many series that we've done, uh, or, do you remember when we used to do the OV8 supercar series? There were drivers who'd come in there and for the first few weeks they were awful weren't they they were at the back they were slow they were going off the track they were getting lost whatever and then one season later or two seasons later top fives you know it was fantastic to see so i think that's the best thing about what we do is is you know you see big improvements and this season rusty is by far and above anything i think we've seen before the drivers at the front in race one a lot of them, you know, just aren't names that we're used to seeing in race one at the front. Yeah, well, you've got that, and obviously then you've got your regulars in there. And it's gone from being like, in most championships, you know, you're talking top five, six, that could be your ultra-competitive. Nah, nah. Here, it's like 20th, 21st, 25th, almost breaching into the 30s. It is unreal. I mean, yeah, you do have that elite group, yeah. of the likes of um, Fred, Sutton, Vidovic, Tepelevsky, uh, Smolensky when he doesn't crash into everything. Um, and, you know, Baker, Kraft. There are those guys that have that extra bit of sparkle over everyone else. But then the gap between each driver is so minimal. It, it's. I, I, <laughs> I'm put it this way it was 29 degrees when I was in my car at Silverstone Racing on Sunday. I'm sweating more now. Than I was then. Well, we have to point out that um, well done for that because um, you took your first win, didn't you? And uh, I mean, how, how much that feel? Oh, absolutely amazing. Um, 
I still can't put it into words now if that makes any sense. But was it was it hard fought or was it like was it quite an easy win or what was? Um, I don't really want to say because I didn't shine off it, but no, it was <laughs> I, in a way I inherited it. Um, like the first race, I was fighting for the lead, um, hammer and tongs, until I had my trademark moment. And I nearly threw it in the Brooklands. I seem to be doing something like this every round, on the sim or in the real thing. And um, but the second race, Echo's got a really good start on me, um, and I got held up by someone who missed a gear on the start. So Echo's pulled a good ten, he took got a good ten car lead on me on the first lap. And he was just kind of eking away from me, eking away from me, and then I managed to stem the stem the bleed until after about lap five. And I noticed he was fighting a bunch of cars that weren't isn't wasn't even in his class. So he was against, he was, you know, he was fighting against the Valvers, and he was holding himself up. So, oh, brilliant! I hope he keeps doing this because then I'm going to be able to catch him. And about five laps from the end, he got tagged by one. Oh. And um, but he didn't need to be fighting them. That's that's the, as soon as I saw that happen, I got in the lead. I had um, Luke Haberman behind me, who was in class, keeping me honest, and I was pushing. I had a Valver in front of me who I was pushing really hard. I was flashing the lights. I was, I was literally doing everything. Just get out of my bloody way. And um, <laughs> as soon as I had the lead, I thought, all right, I can ease up off him a little bit. I don't need to push him um, because I didn't want to make a silly mistake and throw it away. And then to add into that, it started raining. And it hadn't rained all weekend. And the, tr you, the track was so rubbered in, it was unreal. And I thought, oh, my God, if this starts raining, I am going to be on an ice rink. <laughs> and um, luckily, it was just stayed dry enough. And But, yeah, just kind of. Managed the gap to the end and absolutely chuffed a bit. I've, I can now say I'm a race winner in the BSRTC and I'm a race winner in real life. And uh, that's quite special to me, actually. Well, regardless of you know what series you're in as well, it's nothing like your first win. And um, I'm sure you'll remember that for a long time to come. Um, just, just before we go, mate, we're heading on for 11 o'clock, so we've got to wrap it up. But uh, any sponsors and, and people you'd like to thank for, uh, for yeah, just in general, well, for TQR? Uh, to be fair, I think I just quite like to thank all my friends and family who've um, with the real Mark II that's helped me out. Um, the only sponsor I have this year, amazingly, is Cumbria Auto Show. Everything else, I've literally done it off the bat, off my own back. And um, I'd just like to say a thanks to the CQR boys because a few of them turned up to support me. And oh, nice. in the Pro Series, Race Hub, for uh, supporting us through this as well. All right. Well, um, always good to speak to you, mate, and I'm um, sure so we'll catch you uh, catch you some point later on in the season. Cheers, mate. Rusty Laidler there, always good to um, speak to, and um, Alex is with the man who was right in the thick of the action all the way through, was uh, Northern Lights Racing, uh, Ross McFarlane. Yep. Hi, Ross. Welcome to the booth. Um, well, like uh, Andrew said, you have been in the thick of it all night long. We kept um, seeing little glimpses of you here, there, and everywhere, and no matter what, you had um, cars all around you in the front and behind. So just tell us a little bit about your meeting. Uh, yeah, hi. Um, that was a pretty, that was an okay meeting. I had a week off last week, uh, a bit of frustration building up, and uh, come back into this one. 100% flat out action all the time, but that was a lot better, yeah. I, I think I went fairly cleanly for once. Yeah, it looked like, um, from, certainly from what we were uh, looking at, no major issues or anything else like that. So some good results tonight, and um, yeah, showing that you can, you know, you can keep with the front guys as well. You know, the 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 packs are fairly large, and you're right there in and amongst it. Anything can happen. You can pick up some places, and you're battling hard. So it's all good. Yeah, uh, there was a pretty uh, intense finish. I think it was race. Possibly race two, maybe race three. There was about six cars yeah. all within a tenth of a second, and I was just sandwiched there in the middle. Did I collide like, with? Ad, sorry, Adam sorry, knows Ross. all about did, that one. Yeah, did I did I collide with you, which resulted in my disqualification? I can't, it was definitely a northern think, lights racing. I think it was you too. Did, yeah. Did you come across the front of me just into the? La yeah, I think the, so. Yeah, into the last corner. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that 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 scared me. It knocked my steering out a wee bit, and I uh, I was going in with two cars either side, not in control of the car properly. Oh, but God. sorry, sorry about that. It was that like was... the slight. It, the thing is, it looked like it was the slightest tap between both of you, and it seemed just ruined the end of both your races. Yeah, I lost a couple of positions, but I mean, I I didn't honestly. There was so many cars around me at that point, I yeah. didn't even see you. <laughs> <laughs> didn't know where to look. 
Uh, what do you reckon? Um, possible, obviously, a week break now. What, when we come back, hoping for more of the same. Yep, yeah, that it, I'm hoping that the this week break will refresh everyone. We'll, we'll come back with a, a a nice attitude, and we'll get some more great racing done. Two weeks from now. Cool. Right, we're going to wrap it up, I'm afraid, Ross, as it's uh, 11 o'clock, as Andrew said just a moment ago. So anyone you want to give a quick shout-out to before we let you go? Well, I just want to shout out my team. I'm sure Colin's already mentioned our fantastic sponsors that were helping us out for this event. But He has, but can you all. remember them as well? Oh, oh, my goodness me, don't put me on the spot. <laughs> well, uh, we have we got great support from Pro Race UK, our wonderful livery provider, Lux Liveries, uh, Dapper and Coo, our latest sponsor, Thrustmaster help us out a lot, and uh, some others as well. I love bass. There we go. I, I love ba- Well, Craig, Craig, Craig loves I love bass. Yeah. <laughs> right. Uh, well, Sorry, uh, <laughs> Alex. Uh, to be fair, Alex always does his Bradley Walsh impression as doing doing the Wheel of Fortune, but now he's Bradley Walsh on the on the chase now, asking <laughs> all these tough questions. So um, there you go. <laughs> Well, well done, mate. Um, Thanks. Have a uh, yeah, have a good evening, and uh, yeah, we'll see you in a couple of weeks' time. Will do. Thanks, guys. Right, sorry, Ben. We're gonna have to call it a night, mate. You should have come in earlier. <laughs> see me wait in there, but it is eleven o'clock, so time to wrap up the show, Mister Woodhouse. It is, um, Alex. Been a pleasure as usual, mate. Yep. Thank you. And good, um, Adam, mate. Bad luck. Um, <laughs> It, it just it, it kind of went well in every single race up to a point, didn't it? And then yeah, just it's one of those things. I think next time, I think you'll be prepared next time. If the race were two laps shorter, I'll be very happy. Well, we'll have to get you back <laughs> in the car at, at some point in the rest of the season as well. All right. Um, well, uh, thank you everybody for watching at home. It's been a lot of fun tonight from Imola. Um, thank you to everybody. Thanks to iRacing and uh, for putting on iRacing live, of course. So. From all of us here at Apex Racing TV and iRacing Live, we will see you in two weeks at the Canadian Round in Montreal. And um, yeah, I'm sure the iRacing MSA British Sim Racers Touring Car Championship will throw up some wonderful surprises again. Good night, everybody.